What have we got here? I, I didn't think you lads would turn up this year. Everyone knows Cheltenham's our patch. You've been punching above your weight for too long. I've been saying that to him for years. <laughs> <laughs> so the last time you were the winner here, you still had an economy. <laughs> <laughs> we were too busy trying to win a proper tournament. <laughs> yes, mate. Give it up, lads. It's never coming home. St. Patrick was Welsh. Yeah, at least he was in English. <laughs> River dancers. Hugh lovers. Stew eaters. Penalty chokers. Tato Munches! Go too far. It's embarrassing. We're just having a bit of crack here. Sorry. Whoever you're backing this Cheltenham, get great offers on our app. Paddy Power, let's settle this. Oh, you were looking a bit nervous back there. Nervous. It's almost impossible for me to sweat. Hello and welcome to our Cheltenham preview night brought to you by Paddy Power, which is also my name. Um, I've put my glasses on now because I can't see anymore because I'm too old. And also by the Racing Post on Racing TV. Uh, I'm delighted to be joined on the well, on the bale of hay by uh, Lydia Hislop, a uh, Racing TV uh, broadcaster. We've got Ruby Walsh, the winning most ever jockey at Cheltenham, which will be forever, probably, ever I'm be beaten. Still, I'm still laughing though. Why? Full show, we were sitting on straw. Brilliant. Astro looks hay straw. What's the difference? I'm from, I'm from Dublin. Uh, group one winning trainer, Tony Mullins. And of course, tipster extraordinaire and deputy editor of the Racing Post, David Jennings. So welcome along, everybody. Some of you may notice we have we are missing a certain Paddy Power trader, Mr. Frank Hickey. Uh, but rest assured, he'll be giving us a full festival preview on From the Horse's Mouth later this week. And also on that podcast, we'll have daily tipping shows for the festival from the festival, recorded after final declarations with Ruby and Rory Delargy as well, who is a proper good tipster too. Okay, so we're going to cover all 28 races this week. Uh, we're, oh, sorry, next week. We're going to call, cover them today for next week, okay? I can read this properly in chronological order. So we have a couple of enhanced prices available for you too, so stay tuned to those. And uh, before we do that, though, I do have some housekeeping to do. So subscribe, first of all. If you're watching this on YouTube, we'll ask you to go and subscribe to the Paddy Bear Racing YouTube channel. There's some great stuff on there and something massive to be landing next week. It'll be including our Cheltenham Quiz show and a very special rewind show at Ruby Walsh and the one and only Rich Ritchie. That was a bit of crack, wasn't it? That was a good laugh, yeah. Uh, then, I thought Home Road could be telling us where the fire eggs is for and things like that. I know, but like it's only us. We don't really care. We, we don't really matter. We don't have a crowd here today, unfortunately. There's nothing uh, flammable around. Nothing, fl no. yeah, nothing flammable. What could possibly go wrong here? <laughs> uh, our offer today, we have announced our big Cheltenham offer. We're giving you your online customers a free bet for each of the first three days of the festival. So a free bet on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of Cheltenham, which you can use on any race. Uh, the first of these will be available to claim this day next week. That's Monday the 13th, also known as Cheltenham Eve. Uh, the fan zones, if you're not going to the festival, and I don't know if you, if you, know, if you were lucky enough to be at one of them last year on the Friday, of Cheltenham, which is also St. Patrick's Day, we'll be hosting some Cheltenham fan zones in Dublin, London and Galway. There's a few tickets still available, so get yourselves down there. It's brilliant crack, loads of special offers and, uh, and, a, and a great day, a great way to watch the festival. And it's Paddy's Day, it's going to be hard to get into a booth or so you might as well book yourself a seat in a fan zone. Finders Keepers, some viewers might remember a thing we've done before called Finders Keepers, which, where basically we just put loads of money into people's random people's accounts uh, in cash, which the winner can then withdraw. But it's coming back next week on Monday and Tuesday. It'll be part of the Good Morning Cheltenham show, which DJ will be hosting, uh, which you can watch on both the Paddy Power and Racing Post social channels at 8.30 a.m. every day. And we'll be dropping 150 grand across various accounts, so make sure you don't miss it. Uh, and responsible gambling, finally, and most importantly, if you are having a bet next week, or indeed any week, make sure you do it responsibly. Now, on with the show, we're going to try and keep it to under half an hour a day, because I know these things can drag on <laughs> into the wee hours. Uh, we'll also be taking some questions from viewers, so uh, please do comment whenever you're, wherever you're watching, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll throw some of them to the panel. But kick off with day one and the supreme novice's hurdle. Whew. DJ, let's go to you first. What do you reckon about the supreme this year? Facile Vega, do we forgive Facile Vega, Leopardstown? Well, I, Ruby will be a better authority on that than me. Um, I think at the prices you've got to take him on. He, he might well win and he might well be as good as previous winners of the race. Um, trying to visualise the race in my head, the, probably the value has gone out of the price now, 3-1. to one. But Marine National to me is probably the fastest horse in the race. I think he's the one that will really travel through the race. Look, there are. Michael O'Sullivan is an inexperienced jockey yet to ride Cheltenham Festival winner. I think he's top class though. Barry Connell has yet to train a Cheltenham Festival winner even though he's owned one. But I just think visually in the Royal Bond, he was the one that poked your eye out the whole way. People are crabbing the form. I think that was a better Irish point to the one we saw at, at, uh, at Leperstown. The third horse, obviously, was Astro Diamond. Champ Kiley was in there. I think the form is okay, and I think he can step up again. At 3-1, to one, he's not value. 
but I think he's the most likely winner, Marine Nationale. Well, the way it tends to happen first race to festival is the bookies kind of cut each other's throats in the morning, don't they, and go mad yes. trying to get people in He will be a bigger price. Yeah. I know this is sponsored by Paddy Power, and those are Paddy Power prices at the moment, which are fantastic, Paddy, but he will be a bigger price on the day. <laughs> I'm not responsible for the pricing, thank God, <laughs> <laughs> says every shareholder of the company. But uh, um, So is this a case of if this was trained by Willie Mullins, Marine Nationale would be shorter price? No, no. I, I think the fact that... We don't know how good he is yet, and Willie Mullins has the favourite in the race is the reason he's the price he is. He deserves to be at least that price, and I'm not saying he's value, but I do think he'll win. <laughs> OK, so Marine National for DJ. Lydia, what do you make of this? I'm is interested it? in the tactics of it and how possible it is that high definition might be left alone on the lead, bearing in mind, Ruby, mm -hmm. that um, Willie Mullins was talking about Fasal Vega and high definition having cut each other's throats by doing that at the Dublin Racing Festival whether everybody will be wanting to back off high definition and he'll be able to control the race to some degree. Do you think there's something else that might go up there to take him on, like uh, Diverge? Yeah, maybe, something like that. But I, I just, I wouldn't, I'd want a better reason to back the Marine Nationale than he's the fastest horse in the race. I don't think the fastest horse ever wins the Supreme. I think a horse that really stays with a high cruising speed wins the Supreme. And that's probably borne out in how many Supreme winners actually win champion hurdles. It's so few, they're so few compared to the Ballymore horses who don't go the same pace early and actually have to have a turn of foot to win to become champion hurdle winners. So, uh, I, to me, you want to be a stronger stayer. The supreme, first race, first day, anticipation, noise, crowd, excitement. I rode enough of them. We always, I always, we always went too fast. They will go too fast. Yeah, I was going to say, did you it even, like, say your last yeah. ever Supreme, were you still like a little no, you're child? You're still red up. Yeah. And that's where you get a stronger pace in the Supreme than you ever get in the Ballymore because everyone's on edge. But will Fasal Vega, do you think, revert to the he'll tactics revert, of the be a change, I'd imagine there'll be a change of tactics on him. Yeah. Um, and then you need something to go with high definition. I'd be surprised if you don't find something if 70,000 people haven't gotten to one horse's head by the time it gets to the start in the Supreme that goes with high definition. I'd be amazed. I think okay. Fasal Vega's yeah. a bit... I think he'll shorten. Um, horses like Imperio Pass are going to go uh, for the for the Ballymore and I think that people will get behind Fasal Vega for the reputation that he's had all season. It was a really uh, substantial effort when he won over Christmas time um, and I'm not I'm not convinced about Marine National. I just think that the, it was an overly strong um, pace in the Royal Bond and he was the one that challenged last and I think that was an advantage to him. The horse I think is overpriced in this race is Rare Edition. Uh, he is the best of the, of the British, I'm certain of that. His time stacked up comparatively against Constitution Hill, no less, on Boxing Day at Kempton. He returned with the dirty scope when beaten last time. He was beaten by a horse who actually ran better than the bare form in the Chalo. And I think he's, he's drifted out to something like 25 to 1. And uh, each way, I think he can definitely hit the frame. OK, rare addition. Let's go on to keep the notebook, Tony. Well, I very stupidly uh, nominated Fasal Vega as the best horse I've ever seen. I actually, <laughs> Again, unfortunately, another one. I'm very sorry <laughs> that I said that. Now, it, you know, I mixed up youthful exuberance yeah. with actual uh, real champion ability. So he has a lot to do uh, to redeem. You know, I don't care if they went too fast. He just wasn't good enough in Leperstown. Yeah. And I think everyone is forgetting Illite Tom. The, you know, the performance he gave, he sat in behind, he pulled out quick and then went away from them. Um, to me, he's the one. Fasal Vega, he's obviously a very good horse, but I'd say he has a lot to learn. And uh, Leperstown exposed him for me, and I think he's a bad favourite. OK, and funny enough, I was going to ask, I saw somewhere on Twitter, which so must be true, uh, that it's, it's hard to put the genie back in the bottle type of thing because Fasal Vega's exactly. been let go this time. Yeah. Is it going to be harder to settle Fasal mm. Vega? Like, if you're riding Fasal Vega, are you kind of going, that's grand, I'm don't, don't, not worried about it? Or are you kind of making sure you're back in the field at the start and all that? No, but I, again, unless they go really hard, though I know people say, well, Shishkin came from a long way back to win a, a Supreme, but they need to go really hard if you're going to come from a long way off the pace. Um, I can't see them going that hard, so I think Sassel Vega will be behind the pace, fourth, third, fourth, fifth, somewhere in, in, in around that area. Um, but I think you put the genie back in the bottle, all right. Um, I don't think the genie was out of the bottle, and uh, I, I, would be, I would be afraid to oppose him more okay. than anything else. Okay, so Fasel Vega. Facile Vega, Illite Tomp, and Rare Edition. No, I'm not Facile Vega. Oh, you're uh, Marine National. Marine National. Although it's been ridiculed. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Marine National. He's going for the fastest horse in the race. 
The okay. fastest horse in the race, yeah. Which Ruby says is a, a schoolboy error. But anyway, yeah, that's, that's okay. It's Robert Ruby. Not, Robert Ruby does not, not race. But if you wanted the fastest horse in the race, he's probably high definition. Okay, I was about to say, yeah. How many <laughs> Supreme winners have you ridden? <laughs> well, yeah, actually, that doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm only, edit that one out quick. But I'm only, I'm only reading for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, th on to my favourite race of the meeting, the Arkle. Uh, so that's next one up. I will start with you, uh, Tony Mullins. Yeah, I was hugely impressed with uh, El Fabio. El Fabiolo in Leperstown. He ran too free, made a couple of serious mistakes, and he just kicked them out of the way as if, you know, it, it was a massive run. Uh, and his run in entry last year, before he became a man at all, shows that he's up to taking on John Bond. So for me, this could be one of the major bets, El Fabiolo. Right, okay, well, that's yeah. very, very bullish. Lydia, you're sitting beside JP. Uh, would they be confident enough? We were, we were. <laughs> I, was, I was at a swanky dinner in London there last week, and uh, one of these Cheltenham preview dinners it was Delhi, and I was sitting beside Nicky Henderson, and I was, he was talking. He love, loves John Bond, like you know, mm -hmm, as, mm -hmm. as you would, or why wouldn't you? But is it a massive step up? Like I mean, was John Bond that good over hurdles? Really? I know it was Constitution Hill. He was behind, but I think that he. I mean, he and Dysart Dynamo. You know, he he he. They set up the race for Constitution Hill, didn't yeah. they? I think I think the Supreme isn't a literal. Um, uh, depiction of exactly how good John Bond was uh, over hurdles. I know that El Fabiolo was less experienced than him when they met at Aintree. I know he was hampered three out, but I still think he got a chance and got to the front and John Bond got past him. Clearly the kingmaker at the, in the match was um, something of a setback in the John Bond story. Um, but again, the, uh, the Calico has, has gone out and won since and proved that he is an, an improved performer. And I quite like the way that John Bond actually learned to jump under pressure. He was going out quite a bit to his right. He did. He just did right as well um, previously at Warwick, but not under pressure, not so so markedly. I, I think he's got the beating of El Fabiolo. I think when it comes to it, his jumping under pressure will be better. I think El Fabiolo has still got the uh, capability of being quite chancy at some. I'm interested in, in what happens with Dysart Dynamo. Would you think that El Fabiolo's mistakes in Leperstown were possibly because he was running free, so the real fast race is going to suit him better to jump? Well, I mean, in terms of That's form, uh, the Irish Arkle is, is the form race, isn't yeah, it? Because yeah. it was just set up to, to be such a strongly run race by Dysart Dynamo, and it just exposed every horse that wasn't good enough over two miles in that race, and El Fabiolo was the one that came out in front. I just think that at Cheltenham, I think that the, there's a chance that he could get caught out quite seriously at, at one. I still think he's quite scrappy occasionally with his jumping. The interesting thing is Dysart Dynamo, you often mention, Ruby, it's a furlong shorter, isn't it, for, for the Arkle. He jumped really well in the, in the Irish Arkle. Is it possible that John Bon and Al Fabiolo are looking at each other, particularly if the rain doesn't come and it remains sort of slick conditions? I realise that's a big if yeah. now because obviously the rain is due. Could Dysart Dynamo get away? No. I don't, I don't think he'd get away because I think both John Bond and Il Fabiola will be on his tail. I think getting a toe will suit John Bond actually. So do I. He's had to make the run in uh, all three starts of offences. Yeah. But no, he was upside his morale first time. But I think something actually dragging him will you'll see and improve John Bond because of that. Um, Il Fabiola, as Tony said, will, is keen, or a little bit keen. So however fast I start is going, yeah, he won't be there. fast he'll enough. He'll be right behind him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the only thing where this could end up. What could happen here is with Dysart Dynamo, someone's going to be inside, someone's going to be outside. They could get racing from the top of the hill. And just when you look at the race, especially as we're still anti-post with 15 left in, there's not going to be that many runners. Like, does it suit for a horse to come from behind them at a bigger price to run into a place? I think it could. I think the three of those are going to go at it. One is definitely going to crack, possibly two. And you never know, you don't need that much luck then to run into a good position. And I actually think it'll set up for Saint Right yeah. coming from behind each way uh, uh, to, to pick up a lot of the yeah. pieces. And who knows how many pieces he can pick up. <coughs> Is there any danger that Saint Roy will go for the Grand Annual? No. I'm not sure there probably is, but yeah, unfortunately, that's, that's where I it's non-runner, no yeah. bet, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Non-runner, yeah. no bet, yeah, it's here. At, yeah. at this point, that's interesting, because there's only four real players, we've just mentioned them, and then how many do you think are going to run? About seven in, in the end, something yeah. like that? So you're each way, first three, non-runner, no bet. Mm. I think something coming to pick up the pieces if these go at each other. He's turned into a shrewdy punter, hasn't he? He has. What about you, DJ? I listened to Rory DeLarge uh, and Frank Hickey <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> I've, uh, I've made an absolute idiot of myself in this race. Again, again, again yeah, yeah, for numerous occasions. Uh, look, I did a, a column back in December saying I thought John was the worst price anti-post favourite I've ever seen at Cheltenham Festival when I think he was around 6 to 4, 11 to 8. And a week before the Arkle, I'm now starting to fancy John Bond for the Arkle. Um, 
I thought Appreciate was going to be your, or Willie's, uh, Arkel horse. I really did. I thought he was the real deal. Like I thought he was going to be the one that was going to go off potentially odds on at Cheltenham. And I was hoping he would do his business in the Irish Arkel. He didn't. El Fabiola won it. If it was a two-mile flat race, I'd have no doubt that El Fabiola would beat John Bon. But li I'm with Lydia here. I think under pressure, when it really matters, I think you can really count on John Bon to come up every time. I'm not sure you can count on El Fabiolo. Maybe you can, that, but... That's where I'm saying that because he is so free that I don't think he's going to be under pressure. El He'll Fabiolo. be flying, but he won't be under pressure. Uh, but I, I, I think, I think mm. John Bon is a safer jumper than El Fabiolo mm -hmm. at this stage. And I think, like Lydia, I think he would have learned a lot from Warwick. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but I, I fancy John Bon. <laughs> talking yourself out of it. So, yeah, so John Bon, yeah. El Fabiolo, saint -Bois. Each way. Each way. And John, John Bond. Bond. Okay, so John Bond. And I forgot to say, actually, for the Supreme, we do have an enhanced price on Facile Vega, 3 to 1 from 9 to 4. Ooh, and the traders are going to hold on to it as take long that. as you can. Lydia says it's going to shorten <laughs> it. Um, we're going to move on to the ultimate. Uh, Ruby, you've got, a, you've got a pass for this one. This is what we're doing today. See, we're not getting token selections from our panel. If there's a race where they don't fancy something, they're just skipping it. Okay, but we're, the other three aren't skipping it. DJ, ultimate? Yeah, I've backed Happy Go Lucky. Um, second in the race two years ago off 147. Like he traded a really short and run. I couldn't believe he didn't go by two years ago. He went to Aintree and won off 149, bolted up. He's had, he's had a year off and then he came back and he, I thought he ran a cracker in the rehearsal behind Long Press. Um, then he ran over two and a half miles at Cheltenham on New Year's Day. To, he's not a two and a half miler. I think he's a big player in the Grand National, Paddy. And I think 152 for a horse like him who's unexposed. You might think, you hear Happy Go Lucky and you say, God, I've heard that name so many times. He must be about 10 or 11. He's he's unexposed over fences still, I think, over these type of trips. And uh, yeah, I backed him at 20 to 1. I think he's a big player. And does he have to win this to have a chance at the national or just a good run? Um, uh, yeah, if he ran well, you'd be happy enough going into the national. I think he's a good horse. And I think Kim Bailey thinks he's a good horse. And Kim Bailey likes to target one at the Ultima. Yeah, I think he's a player here. Okay, Tony. I don't really have any opinion on them. You know, they're, they're just, I don't have enough collateral form to. That's fine. No, that's we, we yeah. don't want token. We want proper yeah. fancies. Lydia? We have a unanimous view. I really like oh the rehearsal chase form. Um, I like both of them. I prefer Happy Go Lucky of the two. He was coming back from a really long break, almost two years at the time, and he went with L'Empresse uh, for longer than Into Overdrive was able to do, and then he uh, f fell away. Like David, I agree that his, the trip last time was wrong for him. He's got that Cheltenham form previously from when he was a, a novice. Um, I think he's a, a big price. He's about 12 to 1, isn't he? I think he will win, but I expect Into Overdrive, who's improved since and won the round Merrick, I still think he will be a threat and staying on strongly at the end. I mean, I know he's towards the top of the market, but for me, those are the two. That is the dominant form in the race. Well, I'm okay. happy now. Happy go lucky. You're happy, yeah. Right, moving on to the highlight of day one, which is a champion hurdle. Often very competitive race, maybe <laughs> not so much this year. Uh, Constitution Hill looks a penalty kick, I'm guessing. Um, Tony? Well, is, is, I, would you say <clears throat> Constitution Hill might be a better horse than Fasal Vega? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Nobody has tested him yet. <laughs> Sorry. 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 Uh, I'm not afraid to have an opinion anyway. But yeah. Absolutely. Um, I, a state man, I was very impressed with him in Leperstown. He, he jumped out, did it all in, in, in a proper run race and quickened away from them. I didn't think he would. I thought Vauban might give him a run for it. But state man is a formidable opponent. And for me, nothing else counts even within 20 lengths. Really? Yeah. It's the, There's no place or anything. There's just these two are going to and be... And you think Statement has, has a squeak deck? Oh, definitely. I mean, the one thing about Constitution Hill now, if you want to be positive, you say nothing is able to get him off the bridle. Yeah. But if you want to be negative, he's never been taken off the bridle, so we don't know what he can do when he's asked. You know, like, uh, Fasal Vega looked unbeatable until he was taken on early, and then he fell in a hole in Leperstown. Maybe Constitution Hill... Now, he looks unreal, uh, but Stateman is tough. I was very impressed in Leperson. Ruby, if you're riding Stateman, uh, like, are you? What, what are you? What, like, Praying. what are you going to do? Like, <laughs> ta tactically, are you? You're, you can't be afraid of one horse, even though you probably should be afraid. No, of but you, you still but have to. But you have out. to make sure that you don't finish last because you try and try and win the race yeah. and then fall away or whatever. Yeah, but I think if you're going out there on the second favorite on Stateman, you're not thinking about anything else other than right. winning. So you're not riding, I know you're supposed to ride to achieve your best possible finishing position, which is technically the rule, but you're not going out trying to rob third on him yeah. or sneak second if you can. You're going out to try and pull it up to Constitution Hill. And if that means you finish fourth or fifth, so be it. But you might as well go down trying as go down thinking, mm, if only I did X, Y or Z. So you're going out in a positive frame of mind on him. But I think it's more 
tactically key here as to what Nico does. To me, he holds the, 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 he holds the aces here. Mm. So what does he do? And, you know, I would much prefer the pressure of writing Constitution Hill <laughs> than to be trying to figure out how I was going to beat him yeah, on statement. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Funny you say, I've heard you talk about Nico as well. You said he's pretty straightforward, just he like... He will, will not cool as a cucumber, just, yeah. yeah. He will, like, he's ridden three or four pretty short-priced favourites at Cheltenham Hung Ball. Most of them have gone and won. I think one of them might have gotten beaten. Yeah, Shishkin last year, who stood yeah. as well. He was beaten before he started That's looking at him. Yeah. But, you know, he'll keep it so straightforward. And I wouldn't be surprised if he made a run. Yeah. If I was in Constitution, then I would. Yeah. Book out and go. If something wants to take me on and go faster, happy days. But I wouldn't be letting it get tactical or messy. And yeah. I think he holds the aces to this rest. Does he win? He does win, yeah. Yeah, OK. Uh, DJ? Oh, yeah, he'll win, yeah. Sure, he's, he's exceptional. Um, I'm interested in Ruby's views on Vauban because... Obviously, I think I think Constitution win, Hill will win. I think probably Statement will be second. But I've thought for the last few weeks that Vauban was... I thought he definitely finished third at worst. Do you know what I mean? That kind of a thing. Yeah, I was probably one of the few people, David, that gets hung up every year on what the Triumph horse is going to do the following year. Mm. I don't expect them to do anything. No matter how good they look in the Triumph, I'm just the one person that thinks, well, hang on now, a Triumph horse or a five-year-old wins a champion harder once every... Nine years, ten years, whatever. But he it is. doesn't have to do a lot to finish third, like. Do you know what I mean? He, he has does. to be. I, I like to move it. Yeah, but I tell you, the, the, I thought I like to move it. I would prefer him at 14 to after watching the race. Yeah, in the yeah absolutely. And that was a hell of a. Performance. It was. A lot of people are fancying I like to move it to run a big race here. Even my two colleagues in the race post, Tom Siegel and Paul Keeley, they are all over. I like yeah. to move it to finish second, even. Mm -hmm. Well, he, he, he could, but now the only thing is, he was is likely to be the one that will be that will go forward uh, with yeah, Constitution Hill. Yeah. So he's going to be ridden on yeah. on the pace. That's mm -hmm. the way he likes to do it. He's a, he's a good winner of the Great Wood. I think at fourteen to one. Is Vauban each way. a more talented horse than I like to move it though? No. What has Vauban Not yet. done? Yeah, I, well, I, I thought it was a decent try for the last year. I think the second and third are, are OK. Is there any chance that Echoes and Rain wins in this? I would think unless something happens There's to There's no either. chance even if he does. <laughs> <laughs> but she's the kind of horse that could place. I think, yeah, well, but who wants, wants to be placed? Wins, so, like, Constitution Hill's statement, I think once <coughs> both of those get to next Sunday and are both declared, I can see Epitant, Echoes and Rain, Honeysuckle, all of them. We know Honeysuckle is anyway, yeah. but I can see a lot of those just dropping out and going to have it going at the mayor's order, but they all think we could have a chance. It's just that Echoes in Rain, I think, will have a best chance in a strongly run two mile as opposed to two and a half mile race. And I could just think that this race could set up for her to even finish second. Possibly, but um, I think she's a chance of winning the mayor's order. It would okay. be my way of looking at okay. it. Okay, okay, fine. So Lydia Constitution Hill? Yeah, uh, I mean, I think he's the best hurdler I've seen. I'm not given to sort of statements <laughs> statements like that. The last yeah. hurdler, good hurdler that I've seen in the flesh was Isterbrack, obviously. He was an extraordinary horse. And the idea that I would be saying that I thought a horse would be vying with that level of form uh, would be extraordinary to me. Um, but after the Supreme, we saw that. And then he backed up in the Fighting Fifth. And then he backed it up in the Christmas hurdle. These are performances that we can measure on the clock and sectionally, and we know that they are out of this world. And, you know, Stateman would win most champion hurdles, but we know that the quality of his form compared to Constitution Hill's form just does not stack up. And, yeah, I think Constitution Hill will be ridden straightforward. I, I think he is straightforward. The only thing that gets him beaten is some mishap or other. And I, I do think, yeah, or some mishap. Um, I like to move it is, is overpriced. Okay. I, I, think, I think he comes there, here with... Would it be the second? Uh, probably vying for the second best form in the race because I thought that that run last time in Wincanton was was really strong and the Great Wood win was really strong as well. But the, the Achilles heel is how his best form comes out because he needs to go forward. You saw that when he was patiently ridden in the Royal Keel, he wasn't the same kind of horse. Okay, Tony, from a trainer's perspective, if you had a horse that was, I don't know, say, I don't know, a 20 for one shot in this or 33 to one shot in this, Love Envoy or whatever, something like that, would you be try and duck the race because you, you feel like you can't win or would you say look we've got to take our chances who knows your man might fall or something might go wrong no well i mean you, you have to decide months out whether yeah. you're going to try and train for this race you know you can't just decide in the last minute and say oh yeah right uh, we're suddenly well he you know, does there is he doesn't he has his mind made up well before so he has <laughs> and he le that. and leaves his options open but I mean, it, it, he, well, he's training, we'll say, for that four days anyway. Oh, I know that. So um, you cannot decide in the last seven days about upping a horse's fitness and that. So he has to be prepared, um, you know, over a course of time to hit a peak on that week. So whether he goes for the race on the first day or the third day, that's not a big change. But it, you can't just decide 
we're going to Aintree and suddenly at the last minute when the favourite oh, yeah, goes no, out, get that, you say yeah, we're going yeah, to yeah, Cheltenham. Yeah. You know, it doesn't work like that. You've got to prepare a horse from 10 to 12 weeks out if you're going to try and peak him for a particular day. So you can't be hopping and ch you know you can you can change into a different race, but you can't change your dates. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Right. So uh, Constitution Hill will probably win, except State Man might, and mm -hmm. uh, and I like to move it is the each way selection in the race maybe from the panel I'd say. And I'd have to mention Vauban, but like, sure he's telling Look, me he's, he's putting you off. It. Everybody has been putting <coughs> me off Vauban. I, I'm not saying I don't think he'll win or finish second, but I think I think you're getting a decent price about him finishing in the frame. Stop digging. I think he's a better Stop horse digging. than I like to move it. <laughs> Stop digging. digging. Right. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> still, I'm deep the, in that hole. The, you'd normally expect to be. Like glossing over the mayor's hurdle flying through, but actually it looks like it's an absolute cracker this year, the mayor's hurdle, doesn't it? So mm. um, I don't know, like it, it, Ruby said it there, presuming the t two favourites get to get to, get to the, uh, the start yeah, line. I, I think like, you will have Honey Suckle. Uh, I think Maria's Rock, it, it reads very much like she's going to run in the world hurdle. I expect Epitan to be supplemented tomorrow, I think. Yeah, got Tomorrow or Wednesday, yeah, yeah. one or the yeah, other. I expect her yeah. to be supplemented. Um, then you have Brandy Love, Echoes and Lane, Love Envoy, Queen's Brooke, she wears it well. I think it's a deep race, Paddy. Yeah. I honestly don't think any of the horses I just named can win any other race at the festival. I think this is the right race for all of them. Yeah. I think they'll be competitive, yeah. and that's just the way I view it. I see it as it from it, or still see it from it, the way, a point of view of a rider. Where can you run a horse to ride a horse that will win the race? I don't see Honeysuckle or Epitant adding to the champion hurdle. They'll be on their heels. They'd add to the champion hurdle. They'd add to the anticipation. Can we add to the anticipation? Are they going to add to the race? Could you see either rounding off the bend and getting into the fight with Constitution Hill and the Statement? I don't. I think they could round off the bend here. You could here. see a four, four horse over I the last I could just see you turn off the bend here thinking, what's going to happen here? I think they do add to this. That's just the way I see it, and everyone's entitled to their opinion. I do think Honeysuckle is slightly regressed. I think there was a result that I would love to see. It's Honeysuckle winning. But do I actually think we're going to see it? I probably don't. It's kind of the wrong year to drop back to the mares, isn't it, for an easier time? Yes. When, you, when you're on, you just as you're on the downgrade. Look, she's been amazing and been incredible, yeah. and she would be the fairy tale. And I will cheer her from the bottom of the hill to the top, but I don't think I'm going to get there. Um, and I think Brandy Love will improve a lot for punches down. And I think Echoes and Rain coming from off the pace. I think Paul Townend has a big decision to make there. There's not much to split, and they're both big runners. So whichever one Townend chooses, or the one he doesn't choose is better value. He's probably a better judge of picking them than me, so yeah. maybe you could go with that one. Okay, yeah. So that's that's Echoes and Rain and Brandy Love, yeah. Yeah, I think they're two uh, Tony, any mad views? Yeah, well, I, no, I just I dearly love to see Honeysuckle winning. It'd be brilliant, you know. She's been a brilliant mayor that got a trouncing for being beaten in the Hatton's Grace, and I mean I thought that she ran quite well. Then she came out in the Irish champion and um, very solid run. So I, I'd agree with Ruby that she's slightly regressed. Um, but that's not to take away from her. She's a, a great mayor. I'd love to see her win it. Mary's Rock is very good. Brandy Love, um, Echoes in Rain, Queensbrook second in it last year. I mean, it, it's a fantastic race that I'd love to see Honeysuckle winning, and I don't think I'd be punted because I think the six horses here, any of the six, including Epitant as well. You know, the, there's a couple of former champion horror winners. Um, it's a fantastic Great. race that I'd love to see Honeysuckle winning, but I won't be having a bet because I think that it's a very tight race. I could, I could actually see, could you see four or five of them coming when they straighten up four or five of them in a line? That's what I can see. Yeah. I can see this developing into a... Fantastic <gasps> race. As they round off the yeah. bend, whereas yeah. I, people are saying, oh, they should be in the champion. I don't see them getting off the bend in the champion hurdle. Yeah. You're thinking, oh, will they? Yeah. I think they will in this race, and I yeah. think it'll be a cracker. Is it just opinion, Lydia, or is there a way to kind of analyse this? Like, you know, Epitante and Honeysuckle, both probably not as good as they were at their peak, but both would be, like, you know, at their peak would be winning this race. But, like, is it, hard, is it hard to actually put a number on how much they've regressed or whatever, you know? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think Honeysuckle definitively isn't as, as good as she was. I think you could see that in the Hatton's Grace, whilst, you know, on paper it was, it was uh, in the same realm as some of her lesser Hatton Graces. I think that the, that sort of verve wasn't there as she rounded the, the home turn. And I am um, sort of a little bit concerned about uh, whether she has regressed quicker than Epitant. With Epitant, it's hard to say because she's been kicked out of the way twice mm -hmm. by Constitution Hill. And then she monstered some horses who were just not in her league. I think her jumping is very slick this season. And uh, my instinct is that she has retained her form more than Honeysuckle. Um, 
and I also think that she put up a career best performance when winning the entry hurdle over two and a half miles last at, at the end of last season and I think she could conceivably build on that so that's where I'm going I do think it's a really the most competitive edition of this race that we've yet seen so Epitant um, uh, Echoes and Rain or Brandy Love take a pass Orbing that's okay no, the only yeah. Brandy, that's, that's totally fair enough DJ I'm a big Brandy Love fan right um, I, I and, a, and Brandy uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, um, I'm very much of the opinion that the vibes beforehand were, were very poor about Brandy Love going to, going to Punchestown. Like, it takes a lot for a horse to be one to two the night before and go off, whatever, seven to four in a race like that where only two horses could really win the race. All the money was for Queensbrook. She still traded at 1.14 and running. She still looked like the old Brandy Love. I would be more disappointed if, you know, she didn't travel through the race and then she stayed on a little bit and you say, oh, that's not the Brandy Love from last year. Like, what she did at Fairy House last year, going the wrong way around, I thought was exceptional, beating Love Envoy the way she did. She's the one horse in the race that I think still could be on the way to becoming a superstar, whereas the others are probably on the way back from being superstars. Um, to go 10 to 1 after that punch 10 race, I thought was complete overreaction. I'd be shocked if Paul Townend doesn't ride her, and I think she's a massive player. Okay, Brandy Love, lovely. Uh, the Boodles is next. Tony, you something on this one, I believe? Yeah, well, <clears throat> no, an interesting fact in this one, the, the, um, the horse that's not on the list of betting here. Oh, that sounds good. So it's, yeah. it's a horse by the name of Bad, so Bad is good. Bad is good. <laughs> so Bad is a horse that has um, earned his rating in France, and Ben Pauling has bought him. And I heard he worked very well in Kempton last week. And it, it, this is the thing where... If Ruby might remember, Gaelic Warrior last year got a French rating and got in. Now, uh, I don't quite understand how this is done or calculated, but um, Bad is rated 138 on equivalent in France. France. Mm. And he's running off 126, is it, or 128? 126. 126. He's 12 pounds in hands. Now, Gaelic Warrior did it last year, and unfortunately he got beat. But... Um, the other horse there that Skelton's bought out of France as well, Punta something, Punta de Liste, yes. he was third in the Victor Lodorum, so he got his rating off the Victor Lodorum, but again, uh, on his couple of runs in France, he should be about 136, and he's running off 128. So it, 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 it's, this is something that I don't understand yeah. yet. I haven't quite worked it out, but the, the horses coming from France are getting a much lighter rating. I think from talking to the handicappers last week, so basically they, what they assured us and it was that they assessed all the Irish horses individually, irrespective of their Irish marks. And therefore you assume if you're doing that with Irish racing, Lydia, but I am only assuming now, and it's time to be corrected, that they take the same thing in I've France. I've been told that before, yeah. They do? Yeah. yeah. So, so you know, irrespective of their marks, the English handicappers, and it's their jurisdiction, they're racing, and they put, their own, like, yeah. they put their own opinion to a horse's race. Well, isn't it lovely then? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, for a, if you can find a nice horse in France, here we are with a horse that I reckon is 12 pounds in light. Yeah. And um, Ponte de Liste is also uh, in that category, I think only yeah. about 8 pounds right. Yeah. But um, bad for me, as the man that found Princess Zoe for me, he he's. Ah, involved. now we're getting the real yeah. truth. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> what about can. the handicapper now? Yeah. We're getting the real truth. <laughs> a, how do you know about the working head? Yeah. And B, we should pause it there. We'll put it on the radar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, he recommended him. Of course, I hadn't got the money to buy him, but uh, he recommended him. You could have to told me. us this before um, he went on air, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, he has to acclimatise as well. Yeah. He's only come from France. Yeah. I think since the 1st of February. So that's a hard thing to do. But Punta de Lise did the same thing to be third in the Victor Lodorum. So I think there are two horses to, in what quite an open race. Tom's horse has a chance. Yeah. Morning Soldier uh, jumped his way to the front in Nace a bit yeah. soon. I'd say if Danny had it again, he'd ride different. And hopefully that'll happen in Cheltenham for him. So okay. I'd love to see Morning Soldier winning for Danny and Tom. But these two French horses, to me, they have this difference of rating that I don't understand yet. But um, they definitely are in at a, a different rating than they should be. Bad is good. 
That is said. good. That is good. Uh, anybody anything to add to that? Or are we happy with bad is good? I think Mike Tighe, to me, is the, not the one I fancy, but he's key to the race, whether he runs or not. Yeah. And the weights stay where they are. <coughs> Mike Tighe comes out, and okay. the weights start to rise. To me, it affects then the chances of every other horse, especially yeah. with foils, what they're actually carrying has as much to do with the ratings. So for me, I'd reserve judgment until I see the declarations. Two, okay. two at massive price, I thought, that could run well. Uh, Metamorpheus uh, for Paul Nolan. Yeah. I, I was... He jumped really well at Nace. He finished fourth in that race that the Boodles winners come out of for the last five years. I think he, the race will suit him because they'll go fast and he'll be staying yeah. on. He's really unexposed. He got him out with uh, Tim Doyles. And the other one is Affidil of Paul Nichols, who has a terrific record in the race. I wouldn't read too much into his run the last day. Needed to run to qualify for the Boodles. You'll see a different Affidil. Is that one of those twinkle in the eyes? I wouldn't read too much into his run the well, last day. Yeah. Yeah. It's all there for you. Well, he though. told me yeah. not to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also all there for you, isn't it? It's a really quick reappearance <laughs> yes. yeah. after the win at Musselboro, which he did quite tidily, mm. I thought, um, and clearly had, had learned quite a bit from first to second start over hurdles. I really like Affidil. I think he's interesting. Um, also interesting what Cougar can do. But at the moment, they're just kind of my like working titles because yeah, okay. a bit like Ruby, this is the kind of, this is one of the races that I actually want to see the decks. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. But that, that's what, that's how I'm thinking at the moment. Okay, so at the moment we're talking about bad, that fan, uh, what's the other French show called? Punta de Leste. Punta, Punta de Leste. Punta de Leste. Punta de uh, Metamorphous, Affidil, and keep an eye on the decks. Yeah, but like, to me, Takao or Takao at 11.5 yeah. has a big chance. Takao carrying 11.10 has a less chance. So, you know what I mean? What Mac Tig does to me is. Yeah, massive, yeah. Massive. Grand. If Mac Tig runs, I'd say Takao will go off 5 to 2. Okay. <coughs> It'd be Perfect. surprising if he'd run though. Would it on his um, Kelso. Kelso run? I'd say it'll let him run. I think he'll run. Right. Mm -hmm. National on Chase. Any views? I, look, I are the man in a shop price favourite. Is there one question mark about him? It possibly could be stamina. He was travelling best turning in in last year's Irish Grand National. Now he had a lot of weight and he did make a mistake at the second last, but it's hard to say he finished as strong as he looked he was going to turn it in. That's the only slight question mark. He had a lot of weight and he did make a mistake. But it, to me, if he stays, he wins. But do you, like stamina, it's, I know I, I sound like a stupid question, probably is a stupid question. Is it that important in this race or is it like a below, like, as in, like, sorry, they're not going as fast. Like, do you know what I mean? Was, yeah, is no, it, it'll be, look, there's obviously a smaller field than it used to be, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I still think at three miles and six furlongs, you have to stay regardless. Okay. It was a stupid question. I could see it with a smirk in your face. I didn't say that, buddy. <laughs> no, you don't have you to say it, Yeah, you were thinking it. You were thinking it. I kind of knew as it was coming out, you know. Um, DJ. Yeah, of all the show prices, he's the one that I'd be very much thinking is probably a little bit of value. Uh, I just think his form is exceptional compared to the rest of them. Uh, third in the Ballymore, third in a really good brown advisory. Uh, like he travelled beautifully and jumped beautifully in the Irish National. The stamina is the one little bit, just that maybe last kind of two furlongs, but I think he'll be fine. I I don't think he'll come off the bridle. Okay, Tony. I'd say a good favourite here. I think he'll win. And um, there's nothing, you know. I I don't. <coughs> Ramale is, you know, obviously second favourite. Yeah. So, <laughs> but no, I think the favourite is quite well, clear. Caught here. here I'd be surprised. If the two of them ran the one race, tell you the truth. Thurston Moyer definitely runs Mallor Mission, Chemical Energy, the next three after him run. Um, but that also brings City Chief into the equation. Ramel is City Chief. Mm. Guy Ardemez Neil, all the same owner. But I'd be mm. surprised if maybe two, but I'd be shocked if the three of them lined up. Which, yeah. So you'd think Ramelis might defect? I think Ramelis might defect, yeah. yeah. Any cold water to I'm increasingly this? coming around to Marla Mission. Um, okay. and, and initially I had to be persuaded to that, but um, I think maybe he was, I didn't have enough use, use of him made last time against Chetstone Warrior. Um, and I just, I like, like the way he jumps with a positive ride. I'm also not completely inclined to dismiss chemical energy. I think it does pivot on how much rain Cheltenham get. I know from having it been very sort of mm. arid and Sahara like now, we've got lo loads of rain potentially falling between now and the start of the festival. Depending if, on which weather app you look at. Exactly. <laughs> if, a lo if a lot of rain were to fall, I'd be less inclined to be interested I think he just completely got stuck in the mud in Nace last time um, so I'm sort of warily watching chemical energy but yeah I'm increasingly liking Mahler Mission. Okay so Geyer Domaino pretty strong from the three lads and uh, a Mahler Mission there for Lydia so that's Tuesday we just need the nap of the day for Tuesday DJ. I'll go Brandy Love. Brandy Love okay lovely Tony. Well, uh, hmm, wait now. I'll go bad each way. Oh, like a bad the each bad way. way yeah. The bookies love to hear that. The bad, bad each way, yeah. A bad each way. Uh, Ruby? In the boodles. Um, 
I'd find it very hard to go against Const or against obviously constitutionally. I was going to say, <laughs> well, 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 put your neck you? up the you're line. Right. <laughs> I, uh, getting all out there. I still find it hard to go against Fasal Vega. Okay, Fasal Vega and uh, Lydia. Happy go lucky. Happy go lucky. Beautiful. Okay, we're going to take the shortest of short breaks. We'll be back for day two right after this. So I've got out around that and off the bend. I'm going to chase my hands under here. And it's, 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 it goes through your mind last, last hurdle because the commentator even said, oh, down to the last this time. It's funny it when, like, you, when you're watching racing, and I've saw that since I stopped riding, everything takes much longer. When you're on a horse back, this is happening so quick yeah. compared to just watching the television. Ah, oh, oh, roar, it's a roar yeah. after that. But again, that? It, was, it, was, it was just the opposite from the year before. It was quite silent coming yeah. to the last. Yeah. You know, it was... It all got quiet, and when she jumped, yeah, yeah. didn't take a breath, then it went. And I remember being interviewed after the race by Claire Balding. I was bawling my eyes out. It yeah. was so exciting. But sport is about redemption, yeah. isn't it? And it was a, it was a brilliant um, uh, contrast to the year before. And that's what's great about sport. You know, it is that, that chance for redemption. Welcome back. That clip we just saw there is from our Rewind show with Rich Ritchie. That was him in the sunglasses inside. Uh, <laughs> it's, coming, it's coming soon to the Paddy Fair Racing YouTube channel, so be sure to subscribe now. It actually was deadly. It was really good fun, Ruby, wasn't it? It was a bit of a laugh, all right. Yeah. Do you enjoy that now? There's a bit of reflection when you're, now that you're old enough to... Some of it, yeah. Yeah, some of it. Some of it doesn't ever get, ever get easy to watch, but yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. No, it's good. A good old day. I enjoyed that. Uh, we have a viewer question before we kick off day two, and this is for you, Ruby. It's a question from Shane Healy. Am I right in thinking the course for the champion chase is different to what the rescheduled Clarence House chase was held on? And if so, what impact could this have? You are right, Shane. Um, the old course in Cheltenham is used in October and November, and then Cheltenham moves to the new course in December, January, New Year's Day and Trials Day. The new course is Thursday and Friday at the festival. The old course is Tuesday and Wednesday. So, yeah, they're two totally different tracks. It'll be a much faster race. Um, It'll just be a faster race. It's a sharper track, and it'll just be a faster race. But what impact it'll have? Probably need to ride horses closer to the pace. But you'd imagine after the Clarence House, both Energamine and Edward Stone are going to pay more attention to Editor De Geet anyway. Yeah. Okay. And DJ, a question for you as well. This one's from Tony, who asked DJ how he's found it working with Johnny Denine and up in the ante. You've been asked this about three hundred times, haven't you? Yeah. Johnny has a cult following now. He is a remarkable man. He is. A proper punter, which I think people love, and he's so honest. Like you, I could rock in there on a Tuesday morning. I'd say, Johnny, how was your week? Desperate day, yes, a desperate cutting back a winner. And you know, usually punters care about their reputation so much that they really don't tell you the truth. Yeah. Johnny just tell, ask him anything, and he'll tell you the answer. He's ridiculously honest, lovely guy, and a great find for us. Right, well done. Okay, right. Day two, we better get back to the action. Uh, the Ballymore Novice Hurdle is the first race. Tony, I'll kick it off with you. Yeah, well, Hermes Allen won the shallow very well, so he's obviously the best horse in England. Um, and, um, you know, his form is, is good. You know, he, he's dominant. And Pera Pass, my information from Willie is that this is an aeroplane and he's improving all the time. So it's going to be a, a massive Ireland versus England to start off the day. Does Willie actually uh, say that? Or is that, are you no, words you what he says? No, not at all. <laughs> I'm out of Willie's yard, I said, yeah, the, yeah, the, okay, yeah. and the others. <laughs> Can you imagine Willie yeah. saying that? I can't it's an airplane. <laughs> yeah. no, the only time that I think ever Willie said to me a horse was an airplane was Duvan when he was at his height. Okay. That's the only time he ever said, I, I can't get to the bottom of this, lad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And unfortunately then it didn't work out with a few things, but he thought he was an absolute airplane. Yeah. But anyway, we're back to this. The, it's just going to be an Ireland versus England here. Then you have Good Land as a solid horse, Gaelic warrior. Uh, Danny fancies Cham Kiley, you know. He thinks that um, he'll jump out, make the running. And um, I said, like, you know, they're going to take you on. He says, the more they take me on, the better, he says. Okay. He thinks that, um, you know, they're running the, the Lawlers in Nace, um, the, the grade one there that he was able to control the race from the front. And I said, you were flying. Yeah, he says, and I could control it no matter what speed they were going. Now, I don't know whether the farm is fully solid in that race, but he did, told me beforehand he'd win, and he did win. Yeah. Okay. And um, he's very confident that he'll give these a, a good go. And he'll be so, out there in front, or he intends to make the running anyway. And... Um, totally so, won his fiver? Um, yeah, it's it. So I, I hope that'll be the first of many winners for Danny at Cheltenham. Okay, great. So Champ Kyle each way. 
Yeah, I definitely. Were, I thought you were going all in on a Perry pass there at the start of that. No, well, yeah. th no, I'm saying that the Willie Mullins camp are okay. all going in Perry pass, and um, Danny won't hear of it anyway. He thinks that he's as good on Champ Kiley. Okay, great. Lydia, is Hermes Allen good enough? Uh, I think he's. I think he's got a uh, good form. The Challo was a much stronger race than it is usually. People like to lock, knock the Challo in terms of what winners go on and manage to do at the festival. But because there'd been there was a deletion of a race at um, Cheltenham nearby, it meant there was a bigger field, a deeper field. It was a much stronger race, and it's depending on how you look at it, depending on which bits of form you pick, it's working out well. I think there was some track biases uh, on the, on uh, acting on the day, so that might um, allow for the different outcomes of form. I think he's a good horse. I think he can go. He can be ridden in lots of different ways but I just like on Pere Pass it's always difficult um, I tipped on Pere Pass a, w a while back in my Red Shelton column and it's always difficult with tipping a Whitney Wendell's horse because you then have to come into the studio and sort of look at Ruby and, yeah. <laughs> and sort of try and work out what, what the reaction is to, yeah, when yeah. you confess that you have done this um, and it got, I got a fairly positive reaction so I was encouraged by that so I'm going to stick with on Pere Pass I think he could be very very good I think he's got gears I think he'll have uh, he's the perfect type for the Ballymore the horse I think that could run well at a price if he runs in this is in the pocket I think stepping up in trip, he, he could hit the frame. OK, uh, before we get the definitive answer from Ruby, DJ? Yeah, I'm sick, Paddy. I, a bit like Lydia, um, on Up in the Ante, which you mentioned, I wanted to really get a winner in quite early in the series. So I was like, right, I'm just going to go for a real safe option. And I was blown away by Hermes Allen in the, in the cello. I thought it was an exceptional performance. And even I thought it was more depth with the likes of Joey and Michan went over and was pulled up. And I thought it was a good race and I thought he was brilliant. And he's a different type of horse to Brave Man's game. He's not as big and he might just be a now horse rather than a later horse. But this is not my first preview night, Paddy, as you might well know. And if there's one horse on the circuit that the, the proper judges, now I mean the proper ones, and you're going to come to one in a minute, they cannot contemplate defeat for Imperi Pass. Now I mean, you know, David Casey, different people along the, along the road ha would be very, very surprised if Hermes Allen beat Imperi Pass. So I'm interested to see what Ruby says. I would, I would like for my own show for Hermes Allen to win. But at the moment, from what I'm hearing, if I'm to believe my ears, then Perry Pass will be winning the Ballymore. Okay, I'd just like to apologise to Tony and Lydia for DJ calling you not proper judges. I know, we all spotted it. We all spotted it. We're going to dance over it. I just highlighted it there, yeah. And I even tipped the horse he was talking about, and I'm still not a proper judge. I'd just like to apologise for that slip of the tongue. He was building up the tabloid journalism. He was building up for all the hype that yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for, com completely forgot where he was going and overlooked Tony and Lydia. <laughs> yeah, it, was awesome. it was so, so tabloidy, it was yeah, brilliant. Um, <laughs> Hermes Allen, yeah, it is rock solid form. And obviously, you wear it well, went to Sandown and won. But the second horse at Sandown, she's a saint. Was well beaten at Doncaster at the weekend. So you can pick holes in the form. You can pick holes in any novice hurdler's form. It's whatever yeah, way you yeah. want to read it. Simple as that. Uh, I would agree. I wouldn't put anybody off Champ Kiley. I think he'll run a big race. Gaelic Warrior looks like he's going to step up and trip and run here. It, the direction of the track is always going to be a worry for him. He was markedly be right the further he went at Leopardstown. So that's going to be a concern for him. But I would be with the. Uh, Whoever's talking in, <laughs> in close Sutton, yeah. whoever's not talking in close yeah. Sutton, I would be with him pair of pass. I thought he was really good in the Moscow Flyer when he beat the Model Kingdom. But it was more the fact that he could win at the distance around a fast punches down mm. uh, that impressed me. I have no doubts about his stamina. He was 2-3 his first start in Nace and... I was delighted he showed those that kind of speed at punches He really is, yeah. That's, that's His jumping's really good as well. Yeah, isn't yeah he's, he's, he's very professional, yeah. So Imperi Pass is, is what the head oh, says. Oh, he's going to win, yeah. He's and the heart gonna says win. Champ Kiley. Tony's heart, anyway. The man just can't, I, the, the tabloid I, I, can't resist, can he? It's yeah. going to win. It's going yeah. to win. I'd say now it, it's more than just the heart. I mean, Danny yeah, yeah. genuinely fancies Champ Kiley to beat Imperi Pass. Okay. So. That's a bit confusing. And you, and, you, and, you, and you easily could. I mean, other than the, the, the Royal Bond, Cham Kiley has been really good this year. He was very good in Galway. He was very good at Tipperary. He was too free in the Royal yeah, Bond and excuse. pulled his chance into yeah. the ground and then won the Lawlers. His form is, is rock solid. Yeah. Okay, so Cham Kiley keep an eye on, but in Perry Pass seems to be uh, the unanimous verdict. Right, uh, we've got the Brown Advisory and we have an enhanced price here. Jerry Kalam is seven, uh, five to two from seven to four, the enhanced price now. Uh, DJ, is Jerry Kalam the good favourite here? He deserves to be favourite. We don't know how good he is yet, Paddy. I think that's the key. I'd be a little bit worried about the ground. I know Gordon is saying that he's not worried about the ground over that trip. I would be a little bit worried about the ground. I think he's a better horse with cutting the ground. Um, 
you'd like to think this time next year we'll be talking about him as a Gold Cup contender. As regards the race for now, I think the solid one all season has been Time Hill. Forget about that Newbury run, which was a mess of a race. They crawled. Newbury's a funny track for over fences. Some, some horses just don't take the defence at Newbury, and I didn't think he enjoyed himself. I thought in the Cotto Star at Kempton over Christmas, on a track that shouldn't really have suited him, I thought he was brilliant. Big day for Michal Nolan. Big call by Philip Hobbs booking Michal Nolan. Um, I think he's the one at the price at the moment. I think he's the one that you, he's almost guaranteed to run his race. Ran a cracker and a really good Albert Bartlett, second in the stairs hurdle. I can't see him finishing out of the frame. Whether he's good enough to beat Jerry Colomb, I don't know. But at the minute, at the prices, he's the one. Okay, Lydia? Um, I really don't fancy Time Hill, but as I'm not a judge, it shouldn't, it shouldn't bother. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on three days this now. <laughs> it yeah, yeah, yeah. shouldn't bother, DJ. I, I think that was a terrible quarter star, an absolutely terrible quarter star. The time was absolutely glacial. Everything made mistakes. Glacial, what a great word. And he managed to be in front <laughs> at the end. Judge. Well done. <laughs> um, I just don't think he's taken to fences at all. I don't think the quarter star proves anything. Um, the rain, I think, is going to be needed for Jerry Colomb. I massively respect him. I think that he's going to improve for stepping up to three miles, but I do think he needs the rain to come, definitely. I can't have Sir Gerhard for this race with that little experience. And I really like the real Wacker. Um, right. I thought it was a superb performance in the Dipper. And going forward, Sorry I think that. that he's... Uh, <laughs> Back Imperial Pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, all, we all got that message. Yep, good. <laughs> Going forward, I think uh, you know he can be he can be ridden um, not as aggressively, but uh, similarly towards the fore in the brand advisor, and he can put with his jumping, he can put everything else under pressure. The real whacker. The real whacker. Mm. Okay, Ruby. I would be concerned about the lack of runs for Sir Gerhard, more so in that at uh, uh, championship level, three miles, one furlong. He's in training a long time and he's very, very fit, but just not the runs in the tank um, going that distance that would concern me as well as the jumping. Um, but he, look, he is a very good horse. He was a very good winner last year's Ballymore. And look, hopefully it'll go right for him. But I would be with Jerry Callum. And I'm not as concerned about the ground as the others. Um, I think Sandown, really dry February, good to soft water ground. I'm not sure Cheltenham will be any quicker than Sandown was that day. Okay. Tony? Yeah, I'm going for the, the real whacker. Um, I think he has coarse form, plenty of experience. And um, Patty Neville, or Paddy Neville, or whatever you want to call him, is making some impact since he went to England uh, with a very small team. So, And he's eyed this, even though he was talking about the Gold Cup at the start, I think he's eyed this out and um, very solid horse at a lovely price. Okay, decent price. Yeah, the yeah. real whacker then for two. He is Time Hill for DJ and the jolly Jerry Kalam, the enhanced one for Ruby. Uh, Carl Cup is next. Uh, Lydia and Ruby, you got a pass on this one? Yeah, I, 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 had, I had really tried for you. I, yeah. I had a look at it last night. I really tried baffling Yeah. at this stage. Okay. DJ? Yeah, I've had a few quid on Beacon Edge. Um, Beacon Edge. Yeah, he's just... I go back to the stairs hurdle two years ago. He traded 5-2 to two in running. Absolutely loved it. Didn't get home. Went chasing, he's a great one winner over fences, he won the Drimmore and then it just, everything just went all over the place started this season. He fell out of love with the game, but just last time at Navin in the Boyne behind Blazing Cal, he didn't actually jump that well, but he was still there in between the final two hurdles. He's, he's rated 147 going into this race, he was 156 at one stage. I think if he travels in the early part of the race, I think he's a big, big player. He was 25 to 1 the other day, I think he'll go off considerably shorter. Okay, beacon edge for DJ Tony. Um, no real opinion. Winter Fog is one. Uh, Ruby, will he run in this? I don't know uh, where he's going to run there, the county. I'm not 100% sure, but he got a fair height, Tony, and maybe he'll, maybe he'll carry it. Yeah, it's hard to believe, Tony, that Winter Fog is rated 152, and Sharjah, who's got a massive chance in this race. I'd say Patrick will ride him. I'd say he'll run here. He's rated 155. I'd say there's more than three pounds in ability and the difference even now between Sharjah and Winter Fog. But yeah, but then Sharjah you have runs there, is he? I, I think he will, yeah. yeah well, Sharjah is on his way. Am I wrong? <laughs> I'll have a match bet with you. I'll have a match bet with you. I'll have a coffee with you that he'll run here, right? No, I don't know where he runs. He's there and he's in the county as well. Depends, I suppose. Yeah. I suppose Camphorn could run well, couldn't he? Yeah. yeah he's, but he's fairly obvious. Sorry, I'm actually market. wrong. I meant he's going to run in the county. Sorry. I've got completely mixed up. So you, you got a free coffee as well? I meant I the county, not the Coral Cup. I wouldn't take it off him. Mm. Okay. I Grand. didn't think he was in the Carl Cup. But. Okay, there you go. Uh, okay, that's fine. Carl Cup, Beacon Edge, keep an eye on that for a big price. I, I've made a complete, complete 
cock up there. By the way. <laughs> Can we edit that? Out? It's okay. No, DJ. we're not. We're no, mine. there's no way. Oh, no. <laughs> How can we edit it? Unfortunately, then it's not like no. your own show with Johnny Davis think, recorded. Uh, yeah. This is out there. I meant Sharp the Coral <laughs> Cup. I think I meant the county uh, hurdle. I think I think, think, I think, I think, I think he's going totally to rattled yeah. by the earlier insult, yeah. 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 and he's yeah. gone. He's yeah. gone yeah. again. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like watching Man United <laughs> against Liverpool. It's like Bruno, Bruno Fernandez <laughs> over there. Look, yeah. uh, come on, Paddy, continue. Uh, okay, <laughs> championship. Do you know what, DJ? You, you, we come to you last this time. So you take a few deep breaths. Breath, isn't it? Breathe yeah. in through the nose, out through the mouth, and we talk about the championship. Lydia, this is one of those races where it is proper head scratcher. The way the way they've kind of build up to the race has been like with the with the the, the, the race at Jumbo Clarence House Chase the Cheltenham the last day and an ergamine not sure is an ergamine the real an ergamine and it's just it's it's hard to get your head around I think isn't it great the fact that we've had a clash in this division a really big meaningful clash at least one in this division in the Clarence House the rescheduled Clarence House as we had last year in the Clarence House and it means that this race has become even more intriguing not less intriguing for that because it means that what is everyone going to do what is the rethink after the Clarence House depending on which set of connections that you are. Uh, I think Edwardson wins this all day long. Uh, I thought it was a really, really strong performance in the Clarence House. Uh, Editor De Sheet was able to control the race from the front. I'm not saying that he went really slow. There were, he went quick early, then he slowed it down and he had enough left to be able to, when Edwardson was a little bit too far, far back and got to um, just ahead of him, it meant that Edwardson had very little left in the closing stages and Editor De Sheet was able to get back up. I don't buy the white fences and Ergamen thing. Um, and I'd always been, <laughs> I, just, I just don't, I mean, just look at the Irish strike rate at the moment. It's, it's, I mean, if, if white paint is all it needs, I'm going to paint the whole of, <laughs> whole of Cheltenham so White and we get the press brief On the press brief cup, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, if that's all that it takes, then give me the white paint. Um, I think that um, an Ergamin has uh, always had a tendency to adjust to his right and he just needed to be taken enough out of his comfort zone on a track that would expose that ruthlessly which the new course wouldn't wouldn't do as much as the old course by the level of opposition and I think that uh, you, when you saw that Edwardstone come up on his right hand side in the at the final fence an Ergerman had nowhere to go he couldn't adjust right because Edwardstone was there and hence you had that major error I mean I think that's a major chink in an Ergerman's argument last year in the same race didn't you so and it reversed in March. In, ter in terms of... Um, uh, Shishkin, and, uh, Shishkin and Yeah, but, but there was no... Uh, in the race fell apart around in Ergamin last year in the Queen of the Champion Chase, and Shishkin didn't turn up, Shaq and Pessoir and seated, and there was very little to, to beat. There was nothing to put into pressure, and he did go right to out the first fence it, after yeah, the he bend. Did. But he did turn around... Well, we'll say... It's our belief, anyway, that he improved in Cheltenham uh, to his... Um, Clarence House uh, Clarence Oh, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah I agree. Yeah. I agree. So, he did. Uh, the only thing that I think I, I, I don't see where nobody seems worried about um, an Ergamines in, in, in the Willie Mullins camp, worried about his Clarence House run. I would be. Where last year I wasn't, and mm -hmm. I backed an Ergamine last mm -hmm. year to win, and um, this year I just didn't see what I thought I saw last year in the Clarence House. I didn't see it this year. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> they've gone out of their way to say that they're not worried about it, and we'll listen to see what Ruby says, but just to me, it looked a flat run, mm -hmm. and I think Edward Storm wins. So okay. do I. And I think that, uh, diversing a little, the, the Irish-English thing has been highlighted too much, uh, and I think this year you'll see a change again. And the pendulum always swings. Yeah. We've had it for a few years now. The checkbooks have been in Ireland, and... Um, English national undressing is not in near the state that people are trying to publicise. And, you know, Brave Man's Game, Edward Stone, Constitution Hill could show that this year. That there could be a huge swing. And to say that people have forgotten how to train horses in England now, that absolute bull. It's just the pendulum swung our way, I'd say, when Jigginstown, JP, and a lot of English owners were sending horses to Ireland. I'd say it'll level up again now. Okay. And we were so graceful that's in victory, weren't we? So that's not going to go back <laughs> and bite us well, in the we ass. Well, we always are, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ruby, an well, ergamine, are we... Like, I'm with Tony. Really? Uh, I was the same. I could see how he could turn it around going to Cheltenham with Shishkin last year, change the tactics, you roll the dice. What do I think going there this year? Uh, I thought Editor De Geet was a good winner of the Clarence House, but I thought he got a brilliant ride. Mm. And I think when you need a brilliant ride to win a championship race, it's hard to win a second. 
and I think that's what he got. And it was even to roll from four out to three out, but to have yeah. enough in the tank then to go at the back of the third last, which meant that Enner Grameen and Edward Stone had to quicken to try and chase a horse that was quickening. And that's very hard. That's what empties the tank, and that's what emptied Edward Stone in the last 50 yards in the Clarence House. I think Tom Cannon will revert and ride him the way he rode him in last year's Arkle, and I think he's the one to beat. I didn't think that would be the case leaving Cheltenham last year after watching the Arkell in the Champion Chase. I thought Inner Grameen would be too good for Edward Stone, who was already an eight-year-old at that stage. But to me, Edward Stone has improved this year. Tingered Creek, Clarence House. I think he's a better horse this year than he was last year. And I think he'll win the Champion Chase. Will they revert to positive tactics with Inner Grameen? That I don't know. That I don't know. Would you? I don't think, you kn I don't think that the tactics so much got him beat the other day. Uh, I just, like Tony, wasn't sure there was the same spark. I don't think it was tactics. Are you right to just forget about gentlemen to me altogether? No, you're not. Maybe David fancies him. He's running here now, not in the Grand Annual. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> he just won't let it go, I DJ. I apologise for everything I've done. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for right. everything, yeah. What I want to say here is that the sensationally shrewd Lydia Islop and, yeah. the, <laughs> and the brilliant tipster that is Tony Mullins, yeah. as well as the greatest jockey that's ever walked yeah. this earth, I think they're all completely right here. Edward Stone is one of my strongest fans of the week. I came out of the Clarence House going, there's only going to be one winner of the champion chase, and that's Edward Stone. I thought what Edward Stone did from the turn into the home straight to 100 yards from the line was extraordinary. And here and afterwards that he was lame after the race, I think that only adds to the performance as well. I think he's, oh, his whole career he's been a better horse than people give him credit for because he stayed an extra season over hurdles and ran in handicaps. He was beaten in a great wood hurdle and stuff like that. I think he's very good, and I think he'll win. Okay, that's I, I really didn't expect in a unanimous uh, mm. Edward Stone verdict there. I thought there'd be a, a bit of an argument as well. So Can I just say, some people have been crafting an argument for Nubi Negra, haven't they, for each way? Yeah. I've been hearing on, on sort He's of circuits. He's had chance, though, hasn't he? Yeah. 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 Prefer, prefer I think prefer a gentleman to me at 25. I think it funny? was on the basis no. of the rain not coming, to be fair. I think when, when it was a, a dry forecast, some people yeah. were arguing. I'm just saying, I mean, he is a big price based on his Cheltenham form. It's the, the only observation I'd make. I'd prefer Grenatine at 25 than Nubi Negra at 20s. Mm -hmm. There you go. Dan Skelton assures me that Nuba Negra will run a hell of a race in the Champion Chase if the ground is good. So he probably he could finish third. Okay, great. Uh, cross country, uh, you're on a break for this one. Oh, I hate the race. Tony. <laughs> oh, I'm on a Kit Kat as well. Kit Kat. <laughs> uh, Ruby. Uh, what does Ruby think? Uh, look, last year Delta work dispelled the theory that you couldn't win the cross country race without having had a run around there. Um, he went in one first time, and it looks possibly a match. I don't know if Franco de Port going to go. I think the Grand Steak de Paris has been his big aim all year, and that's where he's heading for. So, look, it looks between Gardens 2, Galvin, or Delta Work. Who are you with? Who are you against? I'm probably with Galvin, tell you the truth. Okay. And is there a particular reason, or just kind of slightly bigger price? Slightly younger. Yeah. Uh, no real strong opinion. Yeah. Okay. Fresh horse, fresh legs, maybe. Just Galvin, yeah? I backed Galvin in November on the basis of a shrewdy pointing out that it was likely to be the horse's target for Thanks the... Thanks for sharing that on the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did all the roadies hear that? I didn't. Nice. Maybe I wasn't working that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Galloping Dishon, State Man. <laughs> That'll be shovel, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two one. <laughs> so Galvin for you as well? Uh, yeah. Great, okay, nice one. Okay, that's it. Uh, Grand Annual then is the uh, is the next one after that. This is the uh, this is <coughs> obviously Mad Cavalry Charge. Any strong views here, DJ? Yeah, I liked her time lucky. Um, like, he was a good novice. He, he's a strong traveller who you don't know what he's going to find off the bridle. But last time at Sandown, Keelan Woods was brilliant on him. It was the first time he's jumped the last fence behind and actually won a race. Uh, brilliant ride. Like, all his RPRs last year were in the 150s. He got up to 156, 154, 153s. He's running off 149 here. I think the race will suit him. He's, a, he's won twice on the course already. Um, I think it could be set up for him. It's just those last 100 yards are kind of going to be, oh, will he get there? I think he might. I think he's well handicapped. If the ground is good, I think he's got a massive chance. Okay. Ruby, I keep, it keeps coming up in my timeline, the, the El Carberry ride in the Grand Annual and the Nicky Hender. What was it called? Belvano. Belvano. Bel Belvano, yeah, yeah. The work was done earlier in the season there. Yeah, but like that was like, you know, it's, 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 it's spectacular. When you're riding this race, I presume, because it's a mad cavalry charge going as fast as they can over yeah, fences. Yeah, but it's a different race now, Paddy. Uh, when Paul won on Belvano, it was the new course. That could have been a it was a three or four day festival, but it was definitely the new course yeah. anyway. This race is now the second last race on. Wednesday on the old course, faster race. You couldn't 
possibly well you could try but i'm not sure you'd have the same success so sorry just to, just so in my head that means a shorter run a shorter home straight yeah you don't go as far on the far side you descend yeah. much quicker it's actually the descent that makes it much harder yeah to make you descend so quickly on the old course that horses get a bit of momentum and it's hard to catch them whereas okay. on the new course because you descend so so much slower that you turn into the straight with more of a climb and you can actually peg them back. So you want um, a decent, ha handy enough position? Th I think you do, especially over fences. So I will be going with either Dino Blue or Magic Days, two mares that will be on the pace. Okay. Lydia? Uh, I'm going for a slightly mad one here. I quite like Rouge Vif. Okay. Um, he will be on the pace. He has jumped under pressure um, uh, on the four against much better horses. I thought there was definite signs of life last time out at Doncaster. He's got a great Cheltenham record. He would need the rain to stay away, um, but not completely stay away, as long as it doesn't turn to being to being something that we're not expecting it to be. Yeah, so Rouge Vif at a price. Okay, Charlie? There's an interesting race with um, the first, second, third favourite all in the same colours. So it'll be interesting to see what'll happen. But St. Roy, for me, you know, I don't think he's good enough to have a chance in the Arkham. I think he should be in this. Okay, so St. Roy, if he runs. Yeah. Grant and Ruby was tipping up each way, maybe in the Arkham to pick up the pieces. So if, no, if, no, no, yeah. no bet, so exactly, if you're wrong, yeah. you're wrong. Uh, okay, the champion bumper, uh, Ruby, do we know what the best is yet? Uh, look, it's for me is the favourite anyway, and a dream to share then his second favourite at John Kiley's. And they look two very fast horses. Chapeau de Salil probably should have won when he was second to better days ahead at Ferry House. And your fun, 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 the mare. Look, it depends on the weather, Paddy. I, I think if this round that is forecast falls, that would most definitely swing me in the favour of Fact to File. I think he's the strongest there and I think a stronger run race than he got at Leperstown would really suit him. Um, so if the rain does come, and I think there's no way he'll be 10 to 1 if it does rain. Okay, Grant. Uh, Tony? Uh, yeah, there's so many of Willies there that you just don't know. But I mean, listening to Patrick, I thought the most uh, bullish he was after any of them was fun, fun, fun. But maybe he bred her, didn't he? He did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> that, you know, you've you know, got a few more at home out of the family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It does tend to make you hype yeah. them up a little bit. Yeah. I think. Is that how this game works? <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, funny enough, I have a house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or a full uh, sister. Brother, yeah. uh, <laughs> but I would say that the bumper is always a race to wait until close to it. And, um, you know, I mean, Willie is the bumper king. So yeah. you just go with what's best fancy to Willie's. But... You know, there's been years like, um, what was the horse that came from last? Joe uh, uh, Yeah, with Joe Cullen, and much later than the Crazy Wiley horse, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Briar, Briar Hill. Hill. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, if a race is run different, uh, one of Willie's could be out the back there and um, just come through, you know, one of the outsiders. But, you know, it is obvious, you just go for Willie's horses and decide among them. No one else has a chance. Really? Yeah, no. Just as simple as that? Well... Sure, that's the way it is every year, isn't it? Not every year. A dream, year. A dream to share might disrupt yeah. that yeah. potentially. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, what has he won? Ten of the last twenty, is it? That's not a bad strike rate. I'd say. Yeah. Now I don't even know. I haven't looked up that. But I mean, and the ones he hasn't won, and the ones he has won, he's beaten himself a short head and a half a length, and and you know, I mean, if you're going to be looking at the bumper, you're just looking at the Winnie Mullins horses. Okay. Is the experience that's important? Like, because I'm just in my head. Experience you know, of which? No, just, of, just for of the, the horse horses. going over because the big occasion oh, travelling all that kind of stuff. One, like, maybe two runs, would it? One or two, yeah. Um, the trainer is important. Yeah. yeah and three from share is a massive trainer. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. three from three. Like, obviously, what he did at Leperson, like, I don't know, Ruby will probably tell you more. Like, he, I think he is probably the quickest horse in the race, but I don't know if speed is, you yeah, know, what you're saying about he's Sabrina. that pedigree as well. Yeah, uh, he's, he's a hard bird to raise you, isn't he? Yeah. Um, so he's, he's, that, he's pedigree for speed. Uh, look, I I watched him win in last summer, the second time, first and second time. You're thinking, whoa, he's coming, no, yeah. could be he'd, be he'd be half a Melbourne Cup horse. I was thinking more so yeah, the yeah. Cheltenham bumper horse yeah, with yeah. his pedigree, but I think he's a very fast horse. Whether he get the trip in the Cheltenham bumper or not. The one thing have. I think, okay. I think Willie Mullins' is best young horse is not running the champion bumper. I love Ballyburn. I, I agree. Oh, there we go. What's okay. expecting that? There you go. Okay, so you won't hear tip for the shell, the bumper is not running. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, that's great. So the bumper, that's, like, so we're a bit all over the shop, really. <laughs> Just look at Willie Mullins, but nothing. Uh, if it rains, comes it rains, to me, factor file. If it rains, yeah. factor file. Okay, Wednesday naps before we go for another quick break. Lydia? Edwardstone. Edwardstone. Tony? Uh, skip me there for a second and have okay. a look. DJ? Edward Stone. Jesus. Uh, Ruby? Impair a pa. Ruby, impair a pa. 
Oh, yes, I'm actually it, writing all these down because every year, like if I host one of these things, like if somebody says, oh, what do they fancy? I say, like, I can't remember. <laughs> 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 you think I missed Yeah, exactly, yeah, Jesus. <laughs> I'm going for Cham Kiley um, oh. to beat all the hot pots in the Ballymore. Perfect, okay, so Cham Kiley, uh, Perry Pass, Are you listening? Everstone, Everstone. <laughs> yeah, I'm listening, yeah, I was listening, there you go. Okay, another very short break, we'll be back in about 30 seconds. Welcome along to our Cheltenham Festival Ruby, quiz. Ruby's just <laughs> migrating towards Frank there. Yeah, this is typical Ruby. You left out the most obvious one. <laughs> Shut up, you fucking... Well done, Frank. I don't know, you might know. Oh. He sent them back to the car. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's save for the ring, save for the ring. Deputy editor. Deputy, I'll tell you what you are. Deputy <laughs> Noah. A rapper from the UK. Frank rapper. David. No idea. Skip. <laughs> 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 Welcome back. That clip you just watched there was from our Cheltenham quiz show, which will be shown on Racing TV this Thursday after Road to Cheltenham uh, and on the Paddy Bear Racing YouTube channel afterwards as well. DJ, uh, Ruby gave you an awful hard time that day. Yeah, I just look the at HR that. HR department were busy with the, for bullying. They were, yeah, yeah. No, we've, we've made up since. I just look at clips like that and I just go, how did I find anybody to marry me? Put me in a headband in jockey silks. Yeah. I didn't think I could get any ugly, uglier on the screen than I do there. Big red cheeks, a headband, a belly. It's not and good viewing. And, and what? And a temper. And a te <laughs> yeah, I have a bit of a temper. Oh, you don't want to get on the wrong side of me, Tony. Let me tell you. Um, That's all about entertainment. Yeah, things, it is. The things, you, the things you do for the viewers, DJ. I was just about to say, the camera never lies. Yeah. That would be a good thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ruby, right? <laughs> Okay, right. Uh, a quick, a quick viewer question. Um, Andy asks us if Constitution Hill is the most exciting horse in training, and presuming he is, who's next on the list? So, DJ. Oh, that is a good question. Um, I, it, it's it's probably in Perry Pass, but I think this time next year we'll know a lot more about Ballyburn. I just love Ballyburn. Loved him when he won his point. I don't know how he won it, and what he did at Nace I thought was extraordinary. I think Ballyburn is a very good horse. Tony, racing, one of the things I love about racing is that like, we're always most excited about what, what hasn't happened yet. Do, do you know what I mean? You, you, yeah, but some, sometimes you don't appreciate the, really yeah. a champion the horse. You care, what about the bumper? Like, yeah. you know, the intrigue is yeah. what it's all about. I mean, um, you know, in the old days, going to Irish racing, and even still now, you know, everyone's talking about the bumper yeah. before the first yeah. race is run. <laughs> what did you hear about O'Grady's horse? What did you hear about Willie's horse? You know, uh, it's... The looking for another champion is the thing, and the one beautiful thing about our game is when the when he comes along, the champion like Constitution Hill, um, you know, with the Irish English thing, uh, the Presbury Cup, and that everybody will appreciate Constitution Hill, you know, even from Ireland. Mm. You know, I remember the day that Desert Orchid won his mm. Gold Cup. There was more Irish people who clapped him the whole way in than there was English people. You know, so. Aside from our little banter about the Irish English thing, the, everybody loves a champion. And when a horse does, you know, what seems the impossible. So it's, it's just our game reinvents itself every year. It's a brilliant, brilliant game. Will you be superstar in the, in the wings? I would say Gallop and the Champ um, was next after Constitution Hill to me, anyway. Look, maybe by this day, maybe in 12 days' time, he won't be. But right now, I would say he's. Beside Constitution Hill or just behind him? Yeah, well, I obviously agree with that. I was just going for something less expensive. Less ex Put down the shovel, you will, yeah. yeah. I'm just about to take it. It's fine. Like, she's, you, like, it's okay. There's no right or wrong answer. It's an sorry, opinion. Ruby. Yeah. It's sorry, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, just Ruby. I'm just going to tell you go up to everyone and say, yeah. so okay, comes in. Irish or English, right? Yeah. Irish or English. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he knew him he knew yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It probably is Galapin to show. Um, as, as things stand, but I, I, I a bit to, to your point, I think I just want to save the Constitution Hill at the moment. Yeah. He hasn't yet won the champion hurdle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, we're already going next. Mm, best ever, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay, that's great. Okay, we're going to move on to day three. The Turner's novice chasing further. We're on the new course now, right? We are. The longer course. Stiffer course. Anyway. Stiffer course, More right? Galloping. More galloping, right? So Turner's novice chases first. Mighty Potter's a favourite here. DJ, is this a good favourite? Um, he's a good horse. I don't know whether he's a good favourite or not. He deserves to be favourite. I thought his Drimmo performance was the best performance of any novice this season. I thought it was a brilliant, brilliant performance. At the prices, uh, look, I've always been an appreciated fan. I just think he's, he's different. 
and I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt in the Irish Arca because he was 1-5 to five and 1-9 to nine for his two previous starts over fences. He dawdled along and didn't have to come out of his comfort zone at all. And then all of a sudden he's thrown into the Irish Arca and it's like, God, Dysart Tynemo is gone. And I think it was a bit of a shock to the system. I don't think we seem to really appreciate it in the Irish Arca. Stamina, I think he will improve for the step up and trip. There's obviously that doubt in the back of your mind. Will he really see it out? I think he will. I think he's a very good horse at the price at the moment. There is no doubt whatsoever. If all the horses were the same price, I'd be saying Mighty Potter is the bet here. They're not. I think appreciated as a knock in each way bet. Okay, Lydia? I've gone round and round in circles with this race. I think it's probably because I made a misstep right at the start, whereby I backed Bambridge for the Arkle, and now Bambridge is probably, I think, heading here. Uh, with Mighty Potter, I was kind of against him in the Drinmore. I felt that it was like Bambridge just didn't turn up on the day the ground was wrong, and that it was such a steadily run race that actually there was possibilities in behind, and also that Mighty Potter made a couple of serious mistakes. Then I saw him at the DRF and thought, no, no, OK, that, that is serious stuff. And you look at the analysis of the race, and again, it is serious stuff. Then I go back and remember that he didn't travel over very well last year. He, he bolted to post and he crashed through a rail on the way to the start. You know, he had an, ran terribly in the Supreme. And as far as I know, Cheltenham is still over the Irish Sea. Mm. Um, so he's still going to have to travel <laughs> and he's still going to have to put up with the crowd. So now that he's the price he is, I've kind of again gone against him. So as you can see, I'm twirling around yeah. and around. Probably Banbridge, I think. I'm not convinced about appreciated stepping up in trip. I'm just not convinced that that's what he wants. I know it looked like it what he, it was what he once did in the Irish Arc because he couldn't lie up, but I'm not convinced. Okay, Tony? I agree the same. I think it's, it's a serious up in trip to go from the Arc to the Turners. And, uh, you know, appreciated, ran on well, and I suppose he has, you know, he has his chance, but Banbridge for me, Joseph O'Brien's horse has run very well uh, all winter. His strike rate is huge, and uh, it goes under the radar because of the amount of horses that Willie and Gordon and Henry have in that. But Banbridge for me here, good and solid. Good rock solid. Ruby, is it was it always the plan for Appreciate to step no, up and trip, or just it looked like the arc just because Christmas went pear shaped? Well, it was a Dublin Wrestling Festival, Park and it looked Festival. yeah, it looked, and you have to reassess, I suppose, after uh, big events like that. But I would be in this in David's camp here. Uh, I do think Mighty Potter is probably the best horse, but at the prices, I'd be willing to give Appreciated a shout. Okay, two for Appreciated, two for Bambridge, that's okay. Uh, the Pretense is next. Um, Ruby and Lydia, you have a, a, a 30 seconds off for yeah, this one. Thank you. <laughs> Tony Pretense. <laughs> yeah, no, these handicaps, I don't know. Uh, Maxim has done massive stuff off lightweights, absolutely motored in. Maybe the. Dublin Racing Festival handicap came a bit quick for him, or maybe the penalty. Got on the inside, didn't he? Yeah, got, got completely yeah, taken back. Yeah, he did, but I think, you know, I mean, <laughs> what's the great expression? I think that the reason he didn't get the gap was the gap was going too fast for oh, him. Right, okay. You know, so, <laughs> and <laughs> that has happened with a jockey one day when the owner asked him why didn't he go for the gap. He says, because the gap was going faster than I was. <laughs> <laughs> so... And I think that's a bit of what happened, Maxim, that day. Now, they claimed off him on the day, and uh, David Russell seemed to have struck up a good relationship with him. But in, it's very hard to judge a horse that's coming off about, I think he was coming off about 112, suddenly 120, and suddenly he's 132, or, you know what I mean? So it's hard to judge him, but he was massively impressive in those uh, previous two handicaps and I'd give him another chance. Okay, mm. Maxim, DJ, I suspect there's something coming here. Yeah, yeah, this is my strongest fancy of the week. Wow. Um, so, well, at a price, obviously. Uh, I'm a big walking on air fan. Okay. Um, look, Nicky Henderson is not the type of trainer you think would target a pretemps final, but I think this year he might be. I think with walking on air, obviously it makes, <laughs> Tony's really interested in my team. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was paying attention. Ruby is <laughs> polite, he's pointing out my mistake, the Jan Kennedy road. Um, Maxim on one of the two days that he Ruby likes handicaps. pointing out mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll <laughs> plenty of them. We'll very, we'll very, very politely majority. doing it for Tony though. Yeah, um, yeah walking on air. I, I think this is this has been a specific target for this horse all year. Like he he won on his debut over hurdles, and then he he was nine to two for a Grade One that was won by um, Gordon's horse. Though. Unfortunately, he 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 died in the novice chase. What was he called? Top uh, handed. Uh, no, no, no. Um, 
I can't think of his name. It'll come to me anyway. But um, he was he was sent off 92 for that grade one in Aintree last season. This season... Three-stripe life. Three-stripe life. Very well done, Lydia. She's good, isn't she? She's brilliant. Uh, brilliant. Uh, and this still season... Still more to go. You're, you're, still, you're still down there. I have another <laughs> day going. to get her back on site. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're winning. <laughs> I think we're walking on air. He, he's, he's a brother to Meticulous who won over three miles. He's a half-brother to West Coast Time who wanted three miles as well. Um, out of refinement who, of course, was just beaten in the mayor's hurdle. I like him. I, he won off one three three at Exeter, and I thought he'd get maybe seven or eight, eight pound. He got five. I thought he bolted up. Nico gave him one crack after the last. Um, I think he's potentially one of the best horses in this race, and he's only going to carry whatever eleven stone something. I think off one three eight, he's the best handicapped horse of the week. Okay, right. walking on air for Nicky Henderson and for David Jennings in the pretemps. Uh, okay, the Ryanair is next. Uh, the third race today. Ruby, we start with you. We haven't started with you for a while. Cheers, Paddy. <laughs> uh, Ryan and Schluck, I mean, obviously it all changed after Ascot when Shishkin bounced back and bolted in there. Alaho is out, Shishkin is in, and the race revolves around him. I thought he looked so happy in Ascot, stepping up in trip, mm. going just those couple, not even a couple of miles now, fractions of a mile an hour slower, uh, really seemed to suit him. I thought he jumped really well, he travelled better than I had ever seen him travel. Nico rode him like staying wasn't an issue uh, and he bolted in and the race, the race revolves around him. I think at 8 to 11 is what he is at the minute. I think that's a fair price for a shot. Eight to 11 shot yeah. uh, he is, to me anyway. Okay, Shishkin. Lydia? He even jumped straighter at Ascot for going that stride. Just, yeah. stride so, I mean, because he, he went out wildly out to his left um, in the Clarence House last season, and <coughs> for, for that more comfortable pace, he was able to, to jump straighter. I think he completely dominates this race. I know the thing that's been thrown at him is whether his profile is kind of sort of adds up. I only think there's only one bad run, and I think he's got an excuse for that, and that was in the Queen Mother Champion chase last season. He was found to have had a rare bone condition after that. I don't think the run in the Tingle Creek was bad at all. I just don't, I think that Sandown was not going to suit him. I mean, when you see what he did at Ascot in the Clarence House, you know, getting a good track position at Sandown was unlikely. Uh, he just didn't have the pace for two miles anymore, and that kind of right-handed track probably wasn't going to suit him either. So I think he's run perfectly well and shown that he's still got game in the Tingle Creek, and then he's come out and put up a really substantial performance in the Ascot chase. So I think he wins and he, I think he wins it handsomely. So the question for me is trying to find out the horse that finishes second. And I've been going all the way around. I mean, you can argue that Blue Lord is solid. You can argue that Janadil did really well to come from last to first in the race that he made his return in last time. But I'm kind of going to go with French Dynamite. I was more impressed with his jumping last time. We know he handles Cheltenham. And I don't think there's, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think there's a load of pace on here to put him out of his comfort zone. And I think that he can sit towards the four, not be under pressure, and at a bigger price than most, can hit the frame. Okay, Tony, so Shishkin to continue the English dominance <coughs> of this year's festival. Yeah, the Hurt English yourself. dominance, but I mean, I'm not saying they're going to be dominant, but they're certainly going to play a much bigger role this year, and Shishkin wins unopposed here. And um, I always thought that, even when he was racing over two miles, I always thought that when they put this that up in distance, like I always thought the same about Duvan, but anyway, yeah. I never got to prove it. Yeah. What like what 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 do you see that that? Well, I I, I see feeling? horses. Um, some horses can be free on the bridle over two miles and it looks like they have loads of pace. When in actual fact, the, they're, they're going as fast bulling as they're themselves yeah. to 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 get there. Uh, as opposed, to, I think if they were thought to settle behind in a distance race, they'd be much better. Yeah. Uh, you know. Duvan was the one sorry one that I always wanted to see, even over a Gold Cup distance. Yeah, I just thought he was the absolute, and uh, unfortunately they never raced him over a distance. Uh, DJ Shishkin, you no, no disagreement there, I'm assuming. Nope, I agree with my more esteemed colleagues here. <laughs> right. you're, getting there. you're getting there. You're getting there. You're getting there. Uh, okay, we're moving on to the uh, Paddy Power Stairs Hurdle, which is. Uh, I think very strange is that Blazing Cal is such a short price favourite because the, like the elusive Blazing Cal. I mean, what do you think, Tony? Well, it's amazing how he's nine to four favourite. I think they're just afraid of Charles Burns and his. <laughs> um, are you cowardly, Paddy Power? Oh, big time, yeah. yeah. Well, obviously. <laughs> I mean, this horse is <laughs> one has yeah. one run in two years. Yeah. Uh, now he won it's not well. the ideal prep for a Grade One race, is it? Like, yeah, it's especially a stairs. Yeah. Like, um, I think Blazing Gala has his chance, but he's certainly not a 94 favourite job. T. Hoopoo has done everything. He was the first one to bring down um, Honeysuckle. Honeysuckle. He was motored in in the Red Mills. Uh, you know, is that his only two runs this year, it is? I think so. Yeah. 
So, I mean, to me, he should be favourite. Marries Rock. It's more preference for here, isn't it? That's the way it needs to be the chat. Yeah, yeah. Even though she won the mayor's hurl last year, you'd imagine, but maybe they're diverting from Honeysuckle. But Marries Rock is is a formidable opponent. Home by the Lee is there. But I think they are enhanced because a lot of people have thought that, well, there's no doubt he was, uh, Florian Porter was underperforming. But according to what I'm hearing now is Gavin Cromwell had had a problem with Florian Porter for the first couple of months, something with a hind leg or something, I don't know what it was. But they seem to be over it and they're starting to get very confident now. And for me, if they are right and they have him back to him, he wins. Florian Porter. Florian Porter. Again. Yeah. Now it's, it's in, yeah, I do, I think he'll win. He's the best horse in the race, he's done it. Um, he has the best jockey in the world. <laughs> All that, you know. I was starting uh, to think. I was starting to think. Danny is the bet to be leading right here. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's yeah. going to have a good week. Yeah. Now there's two French horses here again. Right. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, the horse that won the Cleve Hurl. Yeah. He's go he's a, a formidable one. And that other horse that hasn't run in England yet is it? Henri Le Fasse. Oh baby. yes, baby. Mm. Well, very good. <laughs> God, Give I'll it a go, what? Tony. Go on. <laughs> the French horse. <laughs> like. Uh, they have a chance here in what is, to me, you know, the, the, the second, third, fourth, fifth favourite. They're, they're good horses, but they're not classy. Florian Porter, if he's back to his best, he'll win. And the, the two French horses, I'm not quite sure of what they are, but if they feel they're good enough. You know, I mean, your man won the Cleve Horror well. Will he go, Tony? If you're saying, will Florian Porter, if he's back to his best, he wins? Is his best oh, good yeah. enough here? Yeah, why not? I'm not sure I mean, what's, uh, uh, he beat all the the ones for the last two seasons. I don't see why. But well, he hasn't beaten Blazing Cal, Tihupu or Murray's Rock. Yeah, because he hasn't met them. Yeah, but uh, I think it's a much better race this year. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I don't agree. I think that um, Tihupu could still be a very good horse. But I think Blazing Cal, uh, Murray's Rock and Home by the Lee, I mean... Personally, Home by the Lee might be advertised by the underperforming of Flooring Porter as opposed to him being very good himself. So, I'm going with Flooring Porter as the best and an interesting bet on the two French horses. Okay. If can you I wanted a, an each way high price. Can I ask a question before we go to uh, yeah. It's just about the rider of Blazing Cull, who I don't know that well. Philip Byrne? Burns, is yeah. It? yeah, can you tell the three of the, you will know him much better Claims than Claims five, so he obviously can't claim in this race, rides predominantly for Charles, his father. Um, but yeah, look, before you start, he's at a disadvantage in that he can't claim and he would ordinarily in a, in a handicap or maiden order be able to claim. Cheltenham experience? Yeah. November, he won the three mile hurl and shoot yeah. first, didn't he? Oh, of course he did, yeah, yeah. right, okay, he's, of course he did. Uh, from watching races and doing analysis and stuff, I would say from last summer to now, he's probably the most improved jockey. Right. Okay. He's, he's good hands. You'd know a lot more mm. than I would, Ruby, but I, uh, the significant improvement in the last 12 months, I think. It's just a you know, heavy mantle yeah. to carry, isn't it? Favourite for the, mm. at this stage, the, the stage well, hurdle, yeah. yeah. You know, you're yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly, yeah, no pressure. <laughs> um, we've done it with. with Princess Zoe on the flat, we have Joey Sheridan riding claim when he should be claiming five all the time and that, but it's really not the right way to go. Um, you know, he essentially is a five pound penalty. Yeah. So, uh, but Philip Barnes is well capable jockey, but in reality, he should be claiming five and he can't. Yeah. So it, it's a penalty for him. I can't believe him 94 favourite anyway. But for yeah. me, he's the worst favourite of the week. Okay. <laughs> DJ? Um, this race has changed completely in the last couple of months. Like after Christmas, I was thinking Ashdale Bob had a big chance because he ran so well in the Carl Cup last year. I can't see him winning the race now. Um, I think Tihupu, Blazing Cal and Maurice Rock are real big players. I think Gavin Cromwell has done an incredible job to get Florian Porter to win two stairs hurdles because he's not straightforward. If he, was, if he were to win three, I think it would be an incredible training achievement. I don't think he'll win. Um, of those three unexposed ones, Marie's Rock is the one I'm really interested in. She was brilliant the last day in Cheltenham in the, in the Royal Keel. I, I, I think if they do run in this race and if Epitone goes for the, the Mayor's Hurdle, I think Marie's Rock could potentially fight for favouritism. I think she's very good. I okay. really do. Maybe. I, my only worry for Tehupu is how often I read that he needs Soft ground. testing ground. Yeah. And you know, Gordon knows his horses inside out and back to front. And you know, I'd, I'd be worried. If we get the rain, I think Tehupu will win. 
Um, but I probably would be siding with home by the Lee if we don't. I think they're riding, riding them with a bit of light this year and I thought he improved dramatically from the Liz Mullen to Christmas and I think he's a better horse than he was this time last year when he finished sixth or seventh in the rest. Okay, Again, this race is baffling me. I'm going to put my glasses on. Solidarity. Okay, Solid, Taken, yeah, Solidarity. Sixes, yeah. Yeah. Um, Blazing Car, I, 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 I mean, I'm slightly concerned about the inexperience of the rider. Also, didn't Charles say that he got him really fit for the Boyne as well? Sort of like, you know, he, he had to prove himself to get there. I don't know. I don't like that going into the race. Chupo, again, I worry about the ground because, you know, it's the usual arc of uh, the ground is worried, the ground is the worry, yeah, the ground yeah. is worry. Oh, I'm favourite. No, the ground's not worried, the ground is yeah, yeah. fine. <laughs> Absolutely fine. Yeah. So <laughs> that concerns me. Mary's Rock has never tried three miles before and she used to pull really hard. Mm. Um, so that worries me. Home, by the way, I think he's an improved horse since they've ridden him with a bit of light. Flooring Porter just seems to be a lesser horse this season. Maybe he'll bounce back classical dream i quite like the freshness angle but he it isn't a straightforward freshness angle is he yeah he, he's willie has been talking about yeah, where they quite get there he's on the road anyway yeah so it's not you know thinking oh well, he's been yeah. laid out for this well he hasn't um so i'm kind of coming around to gold tweet really he's got to prove the stamina in a strongly run race if it's a strongly run race um but i think they seem to be pretty confident that they can ride him in in different ways i thought it's a brilliant ride to win the cleave and yeah, I'm increasingly starting to like Gold Tweet. Okay, Gold Tweet. So let's go recap. Gold Tweet, if it rains, T Hoopoo, if not, home by the Lee, uh, Florin Porter, Marie's Rock. and Marie's Rock. Okay, we got there eventually. And the 25 French, minutes in that race. And the two French horses as good each way. And the value. two French horses, which we'll only, to, if you have to, you have to call them out yourself. Tony. You have, to, you have to, we gold tweet, we've got. Gold tweet, yeah. What's the other one called uh, again? The good each way. Come on, Tony, what's you? it called? You. <laughs> <laughs> it's called. What's it worth? Uh, yeah. Henri Le. Henri Le. Henri Le. Henri Le. Henri Le. Henri Le. Henri Right. Okay, we're moving on to the, <laughs> the Magner's Plate. Like shitty. Yeah, yeah, I think it's you. Henri Le Fosset. Henri Le Fosset. Uh, okay, the Magner's Plate is the next race. Um, any strong views here? This is a. I so was Scottish giving Phil Laura right? a chance, but apparently not going to run here, so yeah, no, hard no. to fancy him. Kilcrut, maybe. Um, you know, placed in a bumper in the past. Good ground at Southern. Trip might be ideal for him. Only, only a, a shout. Yeah. Out. Not that I fancy him strongly. Yeah, and, and Phil Laura would have been very interesting if he ran this race. I did watch the show. I thought it was really interesting. Um, I, I hate, when you look at a handicap like this, the first thing I want to do is, is get a favourite beaten. And... So Scottish has been favoured for this race for ages. And when I went through the race last week, he was the one horse I really didn't want to tip. And I came out of studying the race thinking, this, this, this could be a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, he's rated 143. The trip is going to help from his run against Booth Hill at Ascot. I think he's crying out for this trip. Emmett Mullins has won the race with the shunter. He knows what it takes to win it. I, I'd say he's a better horse than 143. I like his, I like his profile. And uh, yeah, he's 4-1 to one at the moment. It's it's not value, but if you back a winner four to one at Cheltenham, it is value. So it's all right, isn't it? Yeah, um, Lydia. I've had two long-standing okay. opinions for this race, one of which is so Scottish after watching him at Ascot and just thinking you need to step up in trip and you're going to be deadly when that happens. And this is the race that he's he's chosen. Um, but also I quite like Ferrero Bamboo, who ran really well in the Grand Annual last season and shaped as though he really wants a trip like this. So he's got some Cheltenham experience. Um, and Venetia Williams has mentioned stepping up him up in trip, but she hasn't yet. Okay, Maybe she's waiting. Uh, maybe, good maybe she might race. be. Mm. Yeah. Mm, and she yes, had a, a fantastic festival this time last year. Mm. Tony? You know, so Scottish is there, but I mean, you, know, un, you can't really form an opinion in these races till you see the weights and what's going for it. So, um, a watching so brief. Scot uh, yeah, so Scottish has been obviously aimed all the time, but there's four or five down there that are in three or four different races, yeah, yeah. so you don't know what's going anywhere. And Hollow Games was a non runner yesterday, was he? Day before, yeah. Day before. So does that mean he's out? Or I was don't know. I wasn't. Yeah. Really? Hollow game in the arc. Yeah. Mm. He's not Gordon Elliott. Don't attack uh, him. <laughs> or the county hurt. <laughs> Stop, stop. Come on, we've got over it. Uh, okay, so, so, so Scottish. So Scottish, pretty solid favourite, mm. but like, watch it brief, wait and yeah, see. And Ferro Bamboo, mm -hmm. uh, just keep an eye on for Venetia Williams. Okay, we're coming to the Mayor's Novice Hurdle, Tony. Uh, the moment yeah. has arrived. Everyone, the everyone, moment everyone has arrived. Away, Tony. Prin Princess Zoe, uh, I mean, she's a big price. Uh, she's five to two as an enhance here, by the way. Oh, she's yeah. 13 to eight to finish in the top four. We're going five to two finish in the top four but let's see what you have to say before you decide whether it's a back down I presume she's all well and she, well well she's actually I think she's in 
season there this morning. So um, we're hoping to bring her down to the vet tomorrow. But anyway, yeah. I, I'd love if she French was in ballerina. season. ballerina. One in season, is that right? Yeah, well, no, she'd be, you see, now this is Monday, what, so we're 11, 12 days out from the race, yeah. 11 days. And so I'd love her to be in season because it'll be all over then and she'd be fine by Wednesday or oh, Thursday. Oh, sorry, I get you, yeah. And um, look, we have, the interesting thing here is, is Lucia has never come off the bridle in her life. Uh, I'm surprised they're not going for the Supreme with her. She has a five pound penalty here. <clears throat> and she'd have a seven pound allowance in the Supreme, which would give her a 12 pounds of an advantage in the Supreme. Nikki, are you watching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Tony Mullins, make up the Supreme. Yeah. Nikki, just go away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, so hopefully she'll go there, but I don't, I, I don't think she will. I think she'll come here. But she has a five pound penalty. Ashro Diamond also has a five pound penalty. Um, then you have, you know, a, a platter of fillies, of willies. Then you have Magical Zoe, which is Henry's there. Um, but our one has done it all. She's had a sort of a rush prepare preparation for that race in Punchestown. Because, you know, we had it half in our head that we might run in the Johnstown Hurl. Mm. Then we decided that she had done enough in Punchestown, but it was a rushed prepara preparation. You were delighted after that though, weren't you? I was very thrilled. Like, yeah. I mean, coming off the bend, Danny went for home and she shot five clear. And the reason she made a mistake at the last was she conked out. He said 50 yards before the last, she yeah. conked out. And her natural ability after, the la after making a bad mistake, she held on to dead heat. I think it was a brilliant run. You know, as I said to people, Isterbach got beaten, his first one yeah, over yeah. hers, Don Run got beaten. You know, for her to go out and win with a rushed preparation, and in fairness, everything has gone perfectly since, I can't believe, 12 to 1. And I've been telling Paddy Kyo, if he doesn't keep backing her now, I'm going to call him a coward if yeah. she doesn't keep shortening. <laughs> how, He's always telling me. How will you much. be on the day? I'll be very nervous because... Yeah, plenty, of, plenty of runners to tell him before, but this is, she seems special, like. Yeah, that's what I mean, that... that I go over to Cheltenham with horses hoping if they run the race of their life that they're placed. Yeah, yeah. I believe this one has a serious, genuine chance of winning. And I've had her over at Willie's jumping those white <laughs> hurls. I'll put it up on Twitter maybe tomorrow yeah. now. That, yeah. uh, and she was upsized the dog. What do you call the dog there? And he's flying along and he hit me when I was trying to take the camera. But, um, big or the small one? No, the big lad, the big woolly lad. Weller. No, that's George. No, the George's lad. Yeah. Oh. But anyway, the, the, the dog runs into me and... Uh, but she jumped. Riley. Well, now, Riley is right. But uh, Danny did say, the first morning we went over when they were white, that she did have a look. Okay. And just to say, you know, a lot of people don't believe that there's a difference. If you go back to Hey Johnny in November, uh, and Charlie Mullins rode him in the handicap hurl, white flag raised down to the first horse, went, oop, like that, and Charlie went out over his head. So, it, it, you know, I, I, I agree with them. I love these new white. I think it's a great concept. But it's just something you have it's to be schooled to. to do. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying they're wrong. I think they're brilliant. And they, horses are definitely, in my opinion, definitely jumping better since the, these white and horses can identify better. Uh, I love them, but you just have to school over them. Princess Zoe has. And, and Princess well. Zoe has and has done everything perfectly. And um, as I say, I'm surprised that Paddy is not putting enough on her to keep her shortening up. Paddy Kyo, the yeah. owner. Philomena won't be backing her, but um, Paddy is always telling me how much he's going to have on her. So we'll see. If she keeps shortening, I'll know he's backing her. <laughs> but I believe, I believe that she has a winning chance. Yeah. And I'm astounded at her price, actually. Okay, you sound like you're almost insulted. I, well, I'm sort of half insulted because I know the next thing that DJ and I was going to trot out something like, uh, well, if she was trained by Willie Mullins, she'd be three to one. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, he's, I, he's on the way so, back. He's not going to do that now. Uh, DJ. No, I, I, I think the price angle with Princess Zoe, put it this way, if we didn't know she was Princess Zoe and we were just judging her on her hurdle run, she'd be 50 to one. Do you know what mm. I mean? Dead heating with a 40 to one shot of Henry de Bromheads is terrible for him. But we know from the back catalogue that Princess Zoe is a, a Group 1 winner in the flat. We know she's finished second in the NASCAR Gold Cup. And I would love, like, probably you're talking Honeysuckle, yeah, fairy Henry having a yeah. winner. And then Tony is probably next mm. on the list for results that I'd kind of love, not yeah. just because you're sitting beside me. Just the whole story is fantastic. Yeah. Mm. Like, 
Um, I think if Lucia wasn't in the race, you'd have a big chance. I think Lucia is exceptional. Um, I know she. She mightn't be in the race. Right? Yeah, she might. Yeah. Be, yeah. Are you listening, Nicholas? The plea has begun. We'll all we'll all put in a few bob and send it over to Seven yeah. Barrows and see see will it make any difference. But I think with Lucia, like apart from her jumping up the home straight, particularly at the last, like she obviously is a huge engine. Um, I think she's she's potentially head and shoulders above this lot. A lot of joy has a chance at a price. A lot of joy of, of Willie's will be the one I'd like, but I think Lucia will win. But I hope Tony wins. Okay, Lucia, Lydia. Um, I like Lucia a lot. I think Lu Lucia and Asho Diamond are both very talented, but they do have the penalty that they've got to concede to the rest of the field. I think Lucia jumps very smartly. I think Asho Diamond's got a, a good turn of foot. Um, I hope the Princess Zoe run, runs really well. The other Zoe, I think Magical Zoe, has got some, some good form. I was impressed that she was able to win last time that we saw her. But I think this is a really deep race. Um, is Harmonia Maker still in the race? Because there's Halkida Talba, who I think is... One of Gardens is out. Yeah, Liberty Dance. Liberty Dance, Liberty Dance is out. Okay, so Money Maker. So I think both of those are very talented uh, mares as well. I think this is really deep, and again, I'm I'm probably going to leave it to near near at the time. But my long term interest in this race was for Magical Zoe. Magical Zoe. Okay, the wrong Zoe. Ruby. Um, yeah, Zoe, Willie has okay. plenty in it, and I will be coming down on the side a lot of joy as well. I think two miles of Cork. She missed the second last, and. Gavin's mare got by her. I is know the way the you're thinking, is it? Of joy. Is she the Camelot filly that's a bit free, is it? Yeah, they're yeah. running the Cesar, which yeah, um, she, she like the, I know the way you're thinking. Beat her at Cork first time up. Deep then Cave. she went two and a half at Christmas behind Deep Cave, which is just beyond her two and a half. Mm. Dropped back in one over two in her next start then at Ferry House. I think the stiff two miles will really suit her. I think she ran an incredible race in last year's Irish Cesar, which from a very wide draw. She had to do some running to get herself into a position early that day and finished third in the end. Um, I think she's a big runner. I'll tell you what I think, Paddy. I think Paul thinks he probably has to ride Astro Diamond. She's second favourite. She's whatever, three to one. I think secretly he'd love to ride a lot of joy. Okay. Interesting. So keep an eye on a lot of joy. Keep an eye on Lucia, obviously. Paul keep an eye on Magical Zoe. Patrick Road, a lot of Patrick Road, Princess Zoe, or not Princess Zoe, um, um, Asher Diamond. Diamond. I was just about to make that point. She had, he you think Patrick? You would know Asher Patrick Road or Patrick Road are both times yeah. behind the yeah. National and Fasside Vega. Um, I'd say Paul will say whichever one he thinks. And can Patrick do the weight on Asher, Asher Diamond? He can eleven seven, yeah. Okay. Okay. Eleven okay. five, isn't it? Eleven seven. Uh, eleven seven, eleven two is the yeah. other, is it? Yeah. Yeah. But it's a five pound penalty, which. Limony Lorena. Yeah, they've oh, done it with it, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Kim Ewer, finish off day three. Stump uh, Town, moving what? swift. Stump Town, Stump move Town. on to day four. Stump Town for you, Lydia? <laughs> I don't have a strong view here. Um, uh, no, I don't. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend that I do. TJ? Oh, probably Stump Town. He's a brilliant jumper. Yeah. Don't like the race, though. Tony? Isn't it, Kim Ewer, isn't it, what's the two horses? Uh, Am I mixing Two more up? French horses. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> the the, the, the Ramillies and... No, that was the National Horses. Yeah. 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 Is the one of them going back for this, isn't it? No, neither of them. Well, Ramillies hasn't the run. Ramillies and what's the other horse? Guy or the Menil. He's no, too high. It's not to 145, isn't it? Mm. Next is... This is the Willie. second horse of Willie's that was in the... Is in the Mr. Incredible, no? One of them, I just can't remember. He... You know, I'd, I'd imagine that they can't all run the four mile chase, yeah. so there's one of them going it's to be here. Run chase now. So the tip here is Trump Town, Trump yeah, Town. Whatever. And Tony knows he's going to win, but he can't remember. Yeah. It's grand. <laughs> I'll, I'll work it out <laughs> in a minute. Yeah. Dave, uh, watch me on day four. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he uh, won't mind when, when Spencer Sowie is won. Exactly. Uh, Thursday naps, please, David. Uh, Thursday nap is my Chetlam nap. It is uh, walking on air in the Pretemps. Plane. Walking on air in the Pretemps. Need I bother mm. asking you, Tony, would it be unlucky to, to nap her? Oh no, I'm going to nap her, and I okay. believe yeah, I, I'm a believer. Good work, good Tony, would it mean more to you if she won this than it did the, the group one? Yeah, well, it would definitely mean more to Paddy. Paddy has been pushing me. Paddy Kyo uh, and his sister Filmina own the horse, and Paddy has been pushing me and pushing me to go jumping. I said, Paddy, you have a group one horse on the flat. You don't go jumping. So the next thing, anyway, she went to the new market sales and she failed to sell, mm -hmm. and I kept telling him how valuable she was. So he came out, no, Tony, he says, she's worth nothing. He says, let's go jump. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm there with this mare with crooked legs, and I said to myself, now we're going to, this is going to go wrong. And from the first day we jumped her, she's brilliant. And now I'm delighted he kept pushing me, you know, because she loves it. And I would say last year she got a bit sickened with Kiprios 
the powerhouse he was and she kept getting sick in race yeah, after yeah. race and now she seems back in her comfort zone and I believe that she's really coming to life again. Yeah. So. Great. Well, fingers it. crossed and best of luck with it. Ruby, I'd day three. Great results, so it would, but um, I'm going to go for a lot of joy. A lot of joy, okay. Lydia? So Scottish. That's so Scottish. Okay, perfect. That is day three done. Another quick break. Back in a sec. Why can some horses jump and others can't? I once heard a stat from a very clever man who is a jumping coach, and he explained it to me that 10% of horses are, can naturally jump. 10% of horses will never jump, they just can't. And the 80% in the middle can be taught to jump correctly or wrongly. Hello again, that little clip was from our Not Stupid Questions video. It's one of my personal favorites with Ruby Walsh. Did you enjoy that? Does that annoy you, Ruby, when you get some of the really stupid stuff out? No, it wasn't actually, because at least Stephen didn't pretend that he knew it. He yeah. was asking questions that he didn't know the answers to. Okay. Any, anyone's, no anyone's going to stump you? I think a few did, One of the more yeah. PG ones there. There was some yeah, kind was of a couple ruder of, questions. Um, yeah. You were kind of having to dance around answers, yeah. all right, but you look, hey. Exactly. Okay, well, that's a, on, on the. make sure you watch the full thing on the uh, Paddy Power Racing YouTube channel. And also subscribe while you're there. I don't know why. Producer Mark is uh, mad for subscriptions. He must have a bonus based on the number of people that subscribe to our channel or something. But anyway, uh, we have a viewer question before we start the last day. And that is from Mick, who asked Tony, if Princess Zoe were to win at Cheltenham, uh, I thought I was going to say, what would you do that night? But it's what would be the next step for her? Well, that would be an intriguing one because, you know, uh, there's always the Asker Gold Cup there. But Paddy loves jumping. And, you know, it would be probably unwise not to go back for the Mayor's Novice in Punchestown and, or Fairy House. And, um, you see, Paddy has said, you know, everyone's talking about when she's going to stud. And what Paddy has said, I have no interest in stud until she's finished her racing career. And he says, as long as she can race, I want to stay racing. So that suits me fine. Yeah, it does, <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. Okay, so. um, we're gonna kick off with day four. Triumph Hurdle is the first race up. Ruby, uh, probably unusually, or sorry, usually at Cheltenham, another race that Willie Mullins seems to have, dominate the market for. Is, does he have the key to this race? Yeah, he looks to have any of Paddy. Blood Destiny lost him out, Gallimard. So three at the top of the market. They flip-flopped in recent weeks. Blood Destiny has gone into favour over lost him out. I suppose he's favoured on potential. Uh, if you're going purely on form and what they've achieved, Lossie Mouse should be favoured, I would have said. I thought she was, look, I think Gallimard so did well. Everyone knows to beat Lossie Mouse at the Dublin Racing Festival. I thought Danny was brilliant at the third last hurdle and he sorted the race out for himself. And I could see Lossie Mouse turning that form around. I suppose when Blood Destiny was 3-1 to one last week, J DJ was he? Yeah, 11-4. 11-4. Yeah. There was probably value in it. Now they the flip-flopped in the betting. I, I'd probably be siding with Lassie Mouth purely from a price point of view. Rising okay. fans? I don't know. I mean, that'll be Paul's decision, uh, which one he wants to ride. And then Danny will have second choice, you would have thought. So it'd be interesting to see what he does as well. Yeah, it'd be uh, hard for him to get off Gallimard, so. You would have thought so. Yeah. This, well, I, I don't know. Maybe this is wrong. I don't know. But this whole plunge seemed to start. I did my very first preview night last Friday week, and David Casey was on the panel. And I came to try and and he said, Blood Destiny was one of his stronger fancies of the week, and he thinks Paul is right. And at that stage, it was 11 to 8 and 11 to 4. And then that, obviously, with social media now. Um, so I questioned David on this. We were going to yeah. a preview last week, and I said, I was reading that. Because you wrote it, didn't you? Yeah. And I said, and David thinks Paul will ride uh, Blood Destiny. I didn't say that. Oh, so really? So you did. It's in print here. I never believe what you read. I said I wouldn't be surprised if oh, Paul yeah. rides oh, Blood sorry. Destiny. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay, uh, sorry. That's what he said from the back of the car. I was thinking, oh, you want to ring David Jennings because yeah. this is what it says here. Yeah. <laughs> so he did say it in a round. I'm a bit scared now. <laughs> Relax. I it's fine. The sentiment worry. was did there. Did he still ring you? Yeah, no. Everyone, <laughs> yeah, si everyone no. sitting in that room thought, Jesus. Okay, I wrote down exactly, exactly as it was. Yeah, story, and, and, and since then I did one with Paul and I put this to Paul and I says, um, like, which one are you going to write? David wouldn't be surprised yeah. if you were going to write. Uh, Blood Destiny, and I, he obviously didn't give me an answer because I'd say he doesn't know himself yet. Yeah. But I got the impression from what he said about both horses that he would ride Lossie Mouth. He said she needed to be special to do what she did to get herself back into the race at Leperstein after what happened. And I just think maybe Lossie Mouth is the horse for now and Blood Destiny is the horse for later. The one thing I do think is that that comfort zone will finish in the first three. I think he's a, he's a crack in each way, each way price of 12 to 1. I think 
I think Comfort Zone will be second or third, but I think Glossy Mouth will win. Okay. Yeah. I think there's a lot to happen in this race yet, not least the jockey fans, and that will affect the betting. Um, I think rain would be a negative, I think, for, for Comfort Zone. I think he'd handle it, but I think it'd be better if the emphasis were more on speed, and I could see him hitting the frame in those circumstances. I'm not completely convinced that um, Lossy Mouth will turn it around with Gallimard, so I can see the argument, absolutely. Um, but the more I look at that race, she got really lit up, Gallimasso, for being taken back off heels and round the horse that caused all the trouble, Jules de Fete or whatever mm -hmm. it was. And it, that really lit her up. And I thought that she, up until that point, she was settling a bit better than she had done previously. The, the, whether she settles is the question mark for the triumph hurdle over See, two mile one. You're trying to close the gap on somebody else. You usually have to squeeze your own horse up to get him in there. So I'd say Danny lit her up knowing exactly what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's more to, to, to do with w whether she'll see out the two mile one on the, on the new course. So I did, I, I, as you can hear, I'm sort of slightly up in the air, but at the moment, at those prices, I'm leaning towards Gallimarso. Okay, Gallimarso. And Tony, there's got to be a French angle here, right? <laughs> yeah, there's actually another French horse here that uh, Ben Pauling has just Can't bought during the, the week. <laughs> and, oh, no, this one is pretty simple. I think his name is Jipco. J-I-P-C-O-T, I think. Okay. He's not even entered yet. He's going to be supplemented on Friday. Okay. Uh, won a listed hurl in Poe a couple of weeks ago. Very impressive. And uh, is it just a very interesting horse? I mean, he, he, he's he's done a lot and he's not in the betting. So, uh, now whether he settles in, but I mean, I'd, I'd rather a horse only 10 days in a new environment as opposed to a month. I think if, if it goes outside 10 or 14 days that they need to be in a, a yard for maybe Kind Three of getting or four home months. Yeah. Rather a bit on holidays. And, um, but he can That's be. Some analogy. Yeah. Right. Isn't it? Then, what? He says he gets homesick after 14 days rather than just being yeah. on holidays. Well, it's a change of food, and yeah, maybe that's the way of putting yeah. it. But I mean, it, uh, certainly, uh, I'd rather a horse with a very short time or a proper amount of time. So. He could be um, the only British runner in the race if he's going to be supplemented. I don't yeah. think there'll be another runner. Really? Yeah. Uh, well, he's. he's yeah, a British runner is right near French horse. But anyway, he's 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 won in he France resist, there really. lately. Couldn't resist. So. But um, I still say Lassie Mouth. Um, again, I thought Danny rode a brilliant race to enhance Gallimard So's um, profile. I don't think she was a better filly than Lassie Mouth on the day. Not saying Paul did anything wrong. I'm just saying that the way Danny was able to close off the thing at the third last. Uh, change the result. Okay. So it was brilliant for him, but I'd say Lassie Mouth is the better horse. So Lassie Mouth, Lassie Mouth, Lassie Mouth. Keep an eye out for Jipco, mm. Ben Pauling's horse that will be supplemented hopefully on Friday, and Gallimard. So mm. perfect. Uh, County hurdles next, DJ. I think we should start with you on this one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, if any, if, in case anyone's forgotten, about 45 minutes ago or so, or an hour and a bit ago, D DJ yeah. put his foot in it royally. Yeah, I did. I made myself. Even bigger fool than I am already. Mm. I thought when the the conversation about winter fog and sh uh, came up, I my head just went, oh, county hurdle when it was actually the Carl Cup. So You're I apologise. Yeah. I, I apologise. Okay. So this is the county hurdle, and this is the race that Sharjah has got a massive chance in. This is the race that I think he'll run in. This is the race I thought I was having a bet with Ruby over a coffee for because I thought he was going to say Sharjah run the champion hurdle. And I was going to say no, he's going to run the county hurdle. I think he'll run the county hurdle. I think he's well handicapped off mark of 155. I'm a little bit gutted because one of my strongest fans of the week was Pembroke uh, for for Dan Skelton off 136. Loved his run uh, on trials day. Just didn't think he got home. I think if there is a bit of cut in the ground, I think he's a massive player, Pembroke. I think he's one of the better handicapped horses of the week. But he's going to bump into Sharjah, who's going to get a fast run race. I think the new course would be fine for Sharjah. Off 155, like he was 167, was he, Ruby, at one stage? Or certainly he mid could 160s. have been up there, yeah. yeah. Like he's, he's very well handicapped. You know the race is going to be run to suit. It just looks to me like Arctic Fire all over again. Okay. Ruby? I'm going to stick with, and I thought he could be in line for the bonus, I'm going to stick with Colonel Mustard after he's running the more battle. Um, I did give him a shout out last week on the road to Cheltenham and I think with the benefit of the running the more battle under his belt, he hadn't run since early or uh, mid-December prior to that. I think he could improve enough to win this, ran a cracker in it last year when he mm -hmm. finished third. Okay, Tony? I sort of go for the same, but it, Hunter's yarn to me is, is very interesting, but I'm told he's sort of going to go for the... Supreme, but if he runs in this Hunter's Yarn, very impressed with him the last day. And uh, I, I, I just think Sharjah must be getting old at this stage. Yeah, to our conversation earlier about yeah. Honeysuckle and Epitanti maybe yeah. going on the way down with Sharjah, you can make the same argument. Yeah, he may be even on the way down, but on the way down, top weight and a handicap. 
155. Uh, yeah, 155. But he was never probably a 165 horse, was he? Jeez, he was sorry. rated it, but uh, uh, did he ever run to it? Gosh, of course he did. How many maths and hurdles did he win? I'd agree with Tony. You're probably yeah. looking at it two different ways. He had a rating against horses. He was running against the conditions races. He was getting closer did to it. he actually mm. run to it? That's yeah. another argument. Yeah. I, 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 like, I, mean, I, I see how when a, a 172 horse wins a race, that a, your man that's six times behind him becomes 165. Yeah. But to me, a rating is a, his last winning rating. Okay. That, to me, is the top. You know, so if you have a horse that's second like that, he got, he's thrown up to 165, but maybe, I believe he was only a 155 horse ever. That's well, the way I'm reading That's it. a big statement. Yeah. Well, maybe, not ever, but now, anyway. Jim Coco. Jim Coco, that sounds very confident. Uh, I am, I think he's got the very strong form. Um, I like to move it boss the, the Great Wood Hurdle. He came from a lot further back. They had to weave through, pass, bypass hurdles. He's been laid out for this, I think he wins. Okay, so Jen Coco for Lydia. Uh, Sharjah for DJ, we we'll keep an eye on Pembroke if the ground is soft. Yep. Hunter's yarn, if, if, he, if goes, he runs, could yeah. be going supreme, and Colonel Mustard for Ruby. Right, uh, the Albert Bartlett is next. Uh, a race I find very difficult to find the winner of every single year. So hopefully you guys will find it a bit easier, Lydia. Uh, I like him Val Valley Lake. I went a little bit too soon with him, i.e. before he got beaten last time and he drifted out to tens. But I thought um, conceding weight, making his own running up against a very promising stable companion who looked a bit more comfortable going right-handed and whose jumping had improved. I thought it was fine. I think getting a lead, um, it's the stepping stone race that he used for Miller, Henry de Bromhead used for Manella Indo, I think. Um, and I just think the horse is, is, more, is more adaptable. Um, and I think getting a lead in this race, this race I think is deep, by the way. I'm really quite looking forward to it. I think, you know, I can see lots of different angles, but for me, I'm going to stick with Hidden Valley Lake. He looks talented. Hidden Valley Lake. Ruby, I interrupted you there. You're about to jump in and say something. I put up Corbus Cross a long time ago. He's obviously favourite now. Will you run or not is now the question. Mm. He's changed ownership as well. He only ran on the 26th of February when he beat Founder 50 at Nace. Um, he's the one to me, but his participation is probably not guaranteed. Is that because he ran so recently? Yep. And that's too, for a race like this, that's too, too no, short No, I don't know. It's, he's changed ownership as well. It'll depend on how he's come out of the race and how much rain we get. If we don't get that rain, I say there's no chance of him running. Okay. Tony? I must be blind down here or something. That Embassy Gardens, massively impressive to me, beating Notting in Thurles, but he beat them absolutely out of sight. I was massively impressed with him, and I don't seem to be getting the same vibes from all the moats in Willie's yard. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't understand it. He was he, he was massively impressive, and um, his times match it. His sectional times, uh, to me. If I could get them to warm up in Willies and tell maybe, me more, see, maybe that's a, they're keep, yeah. keeping strum on purpose. Well, maybe. Yeah, the New York maybe, but there. Yeah. I think Embassy Gardens, uh, possibly one of the owners, blew me away uh, the whole season okay. in 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 Thorless, beaten nothing or nothing of this caliber, uh, and. I just thought it was very interesting when Barry Connell was in, was interviewed about his horse going for this race, and he says, "This is a slow horses race." He says, "And my horse is not slow," mm -hmm. so I don't wouldn't agree with that sentiment now. But um, he wouldn't be known as the one that wins like, it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it, it's as Lydia said, this is a deep race, yeah. and there are some serious horses for the future here in this race, and I believe Embassy Gardens is the best of them. Right, TJ? I have no doubt that Corbett's Cross will end up being the best of these. You'd love to see him run them, just see what he can do now for Ruby's portfolio on the road to Cheltenham. <laughs> but uh, I, I have a feeling he'll skip it because he is potentially a Gold Cup horse down the line and maybe it's just too much too soon for him. Uh, I think this is a, a Monkfish latest exhibition, Time Hill, Fury Road, Albert Bartlett. That's how good I think this race is this year. The two I like, if, if they do get rain and there's soft in the description, I think Tree Car Bragg will go off favourite. I think the new course is made for him. I think he's the strongest there, and I think he's relentless. Uh, the one I've liked for it all season was Sander Clegan. Whether he's quite good enough to win it, I have my doubts now that closer the race is coming. I think he's a very good horse, sweated up badly before the race at Leperstown when uh, he was beaten by Goodland. I do think he's a good horse. You'll see a different horse at Cheltenham. Whether he's good enough to win this Albert Bartlett, I'm not sure about Sander Clegan, but if it's soft, I'd be fairly sweet on Three Car Bragg. Okay, interesting. Three Car Bragg, keep an eye on Sander Clegan, Embassy Gardens. Corbus Crossy runs and a pretty confident Hidden Valley Lake. Great. Okay, brilliant. Gold Cup is next. Uh, just on this one, 
We are just going to have to give a plug for Shark Power, which is a documentary we're making about uh, Shark Hanlon's horse, which is Hewick, that's running the Gold Cup, won the American Grand National last year. We've had the first couple of episodes. The episode two is out this week. The first one's already broadcast, and I'll be hanging out with Shark on Gold Cup Day if he doesn't ditch me again, <laughs> uh, to see the reactions of everything to that race. And we do have an enhanced, and to celebrate that, Hewick is 4-1 to one to finish in the first four of the Gold Cup. It's, uh, it's a tough place to start the season. But Gold Cup, nonetheless, DJ. Um, I'm actually glad Lydia's on the panel here because I've done a few previews and uh, I actually think Gallop and the Champs will win for starters. I think he's the best horse in the race. I think he's the one horse, if there's an impressive winner like Aplutard last year, I think it's going to be Gallop and the Champs. But I do think there is a huge run brewing in Ahoy Senor. And I've said that at preview nights, and I've been ridiculed. Like, there's people literally booing me on stage <laughs> when I say it. And it's really strange. So I was delighted when Lydia was on the panel because this is my theory with Ahoy Senor. He's a different horse after Christmas. And I think we didn't see even remotely the real Ahoy Senor in the Cotswold Chase. I thought loads went wrong and he still won. And I think the first six fences in the Gold Cup are massive for Ahoy Senor. I think if he gets into a rhythm, and I know it's the same with every horse, if they get into a rhythm, and it's a massive if. I think if he gets into a rhythm in the first six fences... He'll go from the front, right? He's re well, he'd be up there. He didn't make the run in the Cotswold Chase because, you know, he, he was kind of held back and then he kind of made his ground. But uh, I think he's the one horse in the race who's really dangerous for, for Gallop and the Champs because I think natural ability-wise, someday, like at Aintree last season, he's going to put it all together and he's going to produce a huge performance. I think this course is tailor-made for him. I just think at the prices, he's the one I'm going to myself. Oh, he's, he's too big of a price because he's too talented to be that price. I'm glad I'm not going to get booed here because Lydia's on the panel. So yeah. I'm, I'm interested to hear her views now on the race so, because I've heard her views before. So you'd be thinking like Gallop and Deschamps. Yes, you could totally see Gallop and Deschamps destroy oh, I think them all. Win, yeah. But a hoist on your could I be one. I just think he's so Spacking dangerous. Like, without. Yeah, absolutely. He could be the way to go. He's just a horse. I've obviously had a soft spot for over the years, as Lydia has. But w w what's your thoughts on him he's now? He's totally stealing your thunder here. <laughs> we don't bother coming to Lydia because we know uh, what she's going to say. I, well, I backed two horses at the end of last season for the Gold Cup, and they were Galloping to Sean and Hoy Senor. Um, I think, as, as David says, the track is ideal for him. There aren't many situations in an entire season that actually suit a Hoy Senor, and this is one of them. Um, he is going to have to be... He's a bit of a klutz. He still hasn't quite learned how to put his ability and his frame and his legs and everything all together at every single fence. So your heart will be on your mouth all the way around. But I think he has the ability to run a huge race here. I agree with that. But I'm a massive Gallop in yeah, Um I just, I just think he's got a, a huge amount of ability. And I'm in, interested that they have managed to keep his ability whilst uh, sort of calming him down, curbing his enthusiasm a little bit and, and making him look less reckless. And I think that he looked better being exuberant over shorter distance, but this season he now shapes as though he's the kind of horse who can put it together. I have no stamina concerns in short. Um, yeah, I, th I think he's the likeliest winner, but I do think a horse in your run huge. The nearer I get to the race, the more I start thinking that Brave Fans game is going to... I mean, if we're talking about the strongest form this season, he has it the winning the King George. Absolutely. The question mark for him is about the track. Um, and, you know, we've, we've got very small amount of evidence on that. So it's hard to be completely dogmatic about it. It's just I'm interested in how easy he seems to be in a rhythm on a flat track. OK, and uh, Aplutard doesn't get a mention. Aplutard, like, practically lapped them last year, Tony. I mean, like, one of the most impressive Gold Cup winners you'll Definitely. see. Yeah. And it's, is it just too hard to come back after his disappointing start of the season? Or would you say Henry's horses were a bit... Flat at that I don't know if they were. All the horses went to England ran crap, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, his Haydock run, you know, I mean, it's, mm. you know, it's a big hill to climb mm. after that. I mean, if you get well beat, but when you pull up like that, and, you know, it, it, it's. I, mean, I don't fancy him for that reason. Very classy horse. But uh, Brave Man's game, I know that the, the Nichols camp really think he's working well and they're really you know Paul Nichols is starting to talk about this horse in the Cato Star sort of league I don't well, believe that but <laughs> I'd say that he's a he's a very good horse and a formidable opponent but Galloping Duchamp does everything right and I was massively impressive impressed with him the way he galloped to the line the last hundred yards in Leopardstown I thought was massively impressive you know and as Lydia said, he was very exuberant last year, and I said this that'll never settle to a Gold Cup. Then he comes out this year, and Paul is able to drop him in and lob away, jump fences quick in when he wanted, and won. So he's a genuine favourite. That being boring again, but I think the favourite wins. 
We're going to have okay. to be sympathy, have sympathy for Bra Brave Man's Day. And this time last year, Paul was comparing him to Denman. Now he's comparing yeah. him to Cortez. <laughs> I mean, the poor guy. Yeah, um, <laughs> I read that article though, and it was, all he said about that was he was the best horse he's had since. since. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, okay. Which means he's better. Better than, than Denman. Yeah. Still living in Afro County. Well, Cotto lasts a longer than yeah. Denman. Yeah. Yeah. So since Cotto Star. That's literally what that yeah. statement means, right, okay. if you think about it. Okay. Um, well, I don't believe it, but I'm, I'm, I, am, I am saying that they're believing that he's a formidable opponent. Yeah, they I, think they have a series winning chance. I didn't think it until I watched him in the King George, and I would tend to agree with him. Uh, mm -hmm. The further he went in the King George, the more he impressed me. I don't worry about the track. He's a one run in Cheltenham, yeah, was yeah, it? Yeah. In the Ballymore, he was placed behind Bob Bollinger. I think he's a much better horse now. He's gone one way and Bob Bollinger's gone the other. So, like, I'd say he is a big runner, there's no doubt about it. Would I, if you're giving me the choice which one would I ride, I would ride Gallop in the Champ all day, every day. I think he's tailor made for it and I, I think he will win. Um, I hope he wins. Um, as for a stayer coming at them, you're going to have absolute tar, brave man's game, Gallop in the Champ, the classy <laughs> ones. But as always happens in Gold Cups, a stayer will get involved. I thought that would be native Noble Yates all year and I still think it'll be Noble Yates. He gave a high senior three pounds in the Cotswold chase, he wasn't knocked about, three pieces are going back on. I think he'll turn the form at a high senior, and I think he'll get in the money. Okay, but Gallop and the Champ, pretty confident. Yeah. And I'd say Hewick has it all to do. Now, he's unbelievable. He's won the the three races last summer and probably would have won the Kerry National, but moving out of Handicap Company into a Gold Cup yeah. is a different thing. Now, he's a fantastic horse. He's tiny. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's not a big horse. Come, and, like, yeah. not, don't know much about horses, but you go down and see uh, him, he's tiny. Like. Yeah, he, he's not impressive <laughs> to look at. But by God, I'll tell you one thing, go and try and pass him in those handicaps. And he did it with 12 stone and all. Like, he's done some great things, but it's a different league. Yeah. Okay, okay, Grant. Uh, okay, Hunt, uh, sorry, wrap up those. Gallop in the shop, won't take long. Gallop in the shop, gallop in the shop, gallop in the shop. And keep an eye on a hoist in your and um, run into Yates. a place, Noble Yates, yeah. Okay, perfect. And there's no, 66s. Yeah. And there's no French <laughs> horse. <laughs> no French horse, I got. <laughs> Maybe put him up on Red Shannon at 66 to 1. There you go. There's also an anti-post show called Up to the Ante. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> perfect, yeah. Um, the Hunter's Chase, any strong views here? David Christie. Yeah. Okay. He holds all the aces, not like uh, Vaucelet, Ferns Lock, Wing Leader. Mm. I don't know which one's going to run, but um, David Christie holds all the aces. Uh, Bill away to me, has looked a year older this year, <laughs> which he is, um, and he struggled last year. Okay. Yeah, I, I think all season he said Vossile. I, I think I've no doubt that the best of David Christie's is Fern's Lock. I think he could be very, very good, but I think he wanted to mind him and maybe to see or too soon for him in the, in the Hunter's Chase at Cheltenham. Vossile seems to be the one, probably would have beaten Bill away if he didn't make the mistake at the last at Punchestown. Seems to have been trained for the race all year. Was good, workmanlike, but good at Down Royal. Um, Look, he's been no price all season. Like he'd probably be that price on the day as well. But I do think Vassalay is probably the most likely winner. Tony, any, any? Not really. No, I just thought Billaway wasn't impressive enough. But I don't know enough about the collateral form in these hunters' chases. Like it's a completely different, yeah. um, different sport. Sphere, sp <laughs> sphere. So yeah. you know, I haven't a strong enough opinion. No, not not a Scooby Doo. Take the fifth. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, Grant. Okay, perfect. Uh, the Mrs. Paddy Power Mares Chase is next. Uh, at 4.50, and uh, who wants to go first, Lydia? I think Allegory de Vassi is very, very talented indeed, but I'm really worried about the extent to which she jumps right. I think this could be Mount Ida all over again, albeit I think she's more talented than Mount Ida. I can't have her for that reason. Um, impervious, I just, I don't know. I, I, I know Ellie May wasn't, isn't that big, but I, I just worry about imp impervious, particularly if the rain doesn't come. I can see Jeremy's flame. Um, I think he's, she seems to be very solid. She kicked a load of British horses out of, out of the way and Zambella seemed to be improved mm. this season. And how about Ellie May? I mean, Ellie May seems to be a very big prize for a horse that's finished yeah. second in this race and won this race. She, she is, and it would improve a lot for a run in this. But I did think it was very interesting reading comments from different trainers. And Gordon Elliott gave Riviera to tell a big mention this week. But she goes she's, right too. She's 14 to 1. He said that she had issues with her back. She's had work done on it. And he is quite bullish about her. I mean, you look back at her form, which involves Fernie Hollow, Blue Lord okay. last year. I just think at two and a half, she's only a six-year-old. If you're looking for value, I think she sticks out to me at 14s. She does stamina is the big worry. I just worry about her getting home in the new course over that trip. But she's too big of a price. She won't go off that price. I'm like... Obviously, Allegory de Vassi, the big worry is this jumping out to the right. She did it in France. She's done it, obviously, last time. Like, is she going to be in a stereo for launch in the Supreme? Is it going to be that bad? 
I'm hoping it's not because natural ability wise, I think she's I think she's a beast. I really do. I think she's really good. I think she has the potential, as I said before, to win this race a couple of times. It's just that that chink, which is a massive chink. But maybe maybe it's factored into the price as well. Like I think she's that good that she if she didn't she have that chink, on. she'd be odds. You on. think she'd be shorter? She should be shorter. I do. Yeah, I think if she yeah. didn't have, I think that's why she's that price. It's it's Willie Mullins. It's a horse that basically hasn't come off the bridle over fences. It's a horse that's beat Brandy Love over hurdles. Like we have absolutely no idea how good Allegory de Bassi is. She's she's a big imposing mare as well. I, I love her. What price could she be if last time out Embassy Gardens Gallop and the Champ mm -hmm. all won and Billowet? What price well, could well, she get? Well, if well, Willie Mullins dominance, or it's, on, on that day she yeah. cover as short as you like. I mean, Ruby on a scale of one to ten, in, yeah. how worried should I be about this jumping out to the right? Is it a five or is it a ten? Um, ten being most worried, I think. Yes, yeah. ten being, being most petrified. I'd say if you're watching in Tullis, you're somewhere between seven and nine. Um, I didn't think she was as bad the first day um, at Limerick. Uh, it was only late in the race, so she reverts to the way she was in Limerick. Won't be too bad. She thinks she was in Thurles. Won't nice. be great. You're not filling me with confidence. <laughs> at this time last year, wasn't Good Elliot, Good Elliot saying that Mantide had had an operation on her back and that all would be fine? I can barely remember chose. what's happened to Willie Mullins' horses. They're no longer Elliot. I think I think I think that's right. Anyway, Tony, just saying. Yeah, I just. Ruby stole me thunder there with Riviera to tell. I just thought that she's value, and uh, I don't like backing a favourite that has noted problems. So okay. she's obviously a very good filly, very good mare, but you know it's hard enough to back them when they've no problems without backing <laughs> them when they have problems. Okay. So Riviera to tell so. twice, Ellie May sneak each way. I maybe. think so, yeah. yeah. And uh, and Ruby's gone for. Um, the, the favourite Allegory de Bassi for me Debassi, yeah. Debassi, yeah, for DJ okay perfect uh, the lucky last now the Martin Pipe and this is um, we talked earlier Tony about like seeing a, a horse for the future there's often something lurking here mm. isn't there yeah I, mean, I just don't know any of them you know three car brag to me is is, and this is doesn't run here doesn't run here no, no. runs the upper part yeah well then you know I mean there's a host of my but for a race like this to me is picking jockeys yeah Mm. That that jockey is a seer, you know. When you have Nico de Bainville and and Danny Mullins, Paul Town, and all them, there's very little between them. In this race, there could be the a huge jockey, gap between the, the, the huge amateurs, gap. Yeah. And um, so you're looking for Jamie Codd and no, this is yeah, well, no, it's a claimer. Yeah, 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 conditional. You know, so these are young riders that you don't know much about. You know, like when Jack Kennedy and Luke Dempsey and them rode, they were serious advantage the rides yeah. they gave them horses so i would be looking as much here at the rider as actually the horse's mm -hmm. form okay yeah. so if you can get a young lad on his way up uh if he's on a decent horse that's a big advantage on that look i've spent the last two seasons saying that i thought might i was one of the best handicapped horses in training he hasn't won, won, won a race since Newton Abbott, mm. which is uh, a bit worrying but the key thing with might i is Lorca murtha is going to be riding him and he always rides the horse so he knows the horse inside out, and you have a lot of riders in this race riding horses for the first time. They might be very good jockeys, yeah. but they don't know the horse inside out. And uh, I think Larkin Murta for Mai Tai is a is a is a big big bonus. With Mai Tai, he's ran on the new course at the trials meet and should have won. Now he should have won. He really should have won that day. It was two mile one. He had every chance to go by the horse in front of Paul Nichols has drifted out to the but middle of the course. I feel this is painful. Yeah. 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 He he followed him, he's and I was like, just go by Mai Tai, just go by. Yeah, yeah. And he wouldn't listen to me as much as I shouted at the screen. But he's he's got in now off one four five, okay, which is the, obviously the ceiling rating to get into this race. Lorcan knows the horse. He was second to Three Stripe Life at Aintree in the race that Walking on Air won. He's a half brother to Statler, so the step up and trip should suit. Look, I tipped him up and up in the ante for the stairs hurdle at the start of the season. If I thought he could win the stairs hurdle at the start of the season, he'd want to be winning the Martin Pipe off 145. Maybe it's just because I love the horse and people are going to be shouting at the screens, but I do think Maitai is going to have a chance. Race. Yeah. No, he has won a race, but he, he, he won at Newton Abbott and he was a good bumper horse. He's a very good horse when things okay, come together. Okay, stop talking. Yeah. It's fine, thank you. Uh, Lydia. <laughs> Look, and please listen to David. Um, I, I hate to finish on a low, but I don't, I don't have a strong view on, on this. I, this is, again, for me, a dex race. I have to see the declarations okay. to, to see what's going on. I mean, I'm interested where Langer Dan is going to end up, because obviously this has been the plot. Is it the Coral Cup yeah. every year? I mean, obviously, second to Gallup de Champ two seasons ago in this, brought down at the first at this race last year. But, I mean, he looks as though he's being primed for a good run at the festival. So if he wins the Coral Cup or here, he'd be quite interesting. But I want to have a look at the decks. OK, Ruby? Uh, obviously, I was three-car brag all the way. William Spanish Harlem and Hauturier, but 
I think Bella Centilla of Justice O'Brien's could be nicely enough. 133. She's 33 to 1. She'll have to get in. She's 49 in the ballot, but no, no, no bet. She'd probably appeal to me now. Okay, Bella Santilla and Might I, the two selections for the lucky last race, the Martin Pipe. Okay, Friday naps, we're nearly there. David. Allegory de Vassi. Okay, just the hardest one to write down, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Allegory de Vassi, yeah. Tony, or do you want to come, we'll come back to you? Galloping de Champ all day. Okay. Uh, Ruby. I think I'm dub doubling up a Tony here. Galloping de Champ and Lydia. Jin Coco. Gin Coco, nice one, which is exactly what we deserve now. A gin and a cocoa, <laughs> right? Uh, okay, gin cocoa, off, perfect. That's it, 28 races covered. Well done. I've uh, final reminders to the viewers to subscribe uh, to the Paddy Power Racing YouTube channel so you don't miss the quiz and the rewind shows coming along this week, among others. Uh, the offer, don't forget today, we announced our big Cheltenham offer, which was our online customers get a free bet for each of the first three days of the festival. So, free bet for the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I can't believe I have to read that out because people know that the first three days of the festival are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I would think. Uh, but you can use them in any race and the first of these will be available to claim this day next week that's monday the 13th also known as cheltenham eve uh, the fan zones get your tickets i mentioned them earlier for our cheltenham fan zone there's one in dublin one in galway and one in london uh, it's on the friday of the festival which is also st patrick's day and it's deadly bit of crack uh, finders keepers is back on monday and tuesday as part of the good morning cheltenham show with dj it's at 8 30 a.m on racing post and paddy bar social channels with 150 grand just 150 grand been randomly put into people's accounts uh, and responsible gambling finally and most importantly Importantly, if you are having a bet next week, or indeed any week, please do so responsibly. Thanks for watching, and thanks to the esteemed members of our panel, and I hope everybody enjoys chatting. Be lucky.